Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I'm Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about this week's TV news. Um, and we have quite a bit because of course we've just hit Comic Con, although a lot of these things aren't even to do with Comic Con, but for some reason everyone decided to put out new announcements this week, uh, so there's a, a good like half dozen trailers to talk about, which is weird for the TV news. And yeah, so we got a lot of stuff to, to, to work through this week. Um, and do you know what the last part is? I know you didn't even watch the most important trailer. Um, there's actually two that you might mean from, from off the top of my Ooh. head. Oh, I, I, I don't actually know what the second one is. And I'm not sure which one you mean. There's one that I actively almost put in and decided not to based on what was in it. And I said, no, you know what? There's not a lot to talk about here. And I said, not enough. And there's enough in there already. We've got enough stuff on the on the slate already. The, the show's full as it is. And the other one was you, you just being spiteful. The other one I didn't even look at. Yeah, yeah. I actually don't know what that other one you're referring to is. Listen, I think there was a trailer. There may not have been a trailer for it. Maybe I'm just adding on to it. Maybe I'm just assuming there was a trailer. That's how little I cared. <laughs> I don't know if there was a trailer or not. I just, oh yeah, I'll copy and paste it. It's fine. I'll move on. What's next? Okay. So yeah, as is our TV. So as our TV news show, uh, obviously at the end of the show we often pick our favorite episode of TV of the week. That's kind of hard right now. All of the shows we were reviewing have all finished uh, except one. Uh, so. We won't really be doing that at the end, but that's okay. Uh, so without further ado, we'll get into it and start working our way through the big stuff here. So, uh, a couple of quick things up first. Uh, Impulse got renewed for season two. That's the YouTube original, the uh, the, the Jumper spin-off one. It's got a 10-episode season two coming sometime next year. So, Fair enough. What a reaction. And then we also got a premiere date for Iron Fist season two. That's coming September 7th. I mean, it gives us a week off from Netflix. <laughs> yeah, so booking, we, we, booking a nice quiet week there. We, we have uh, stopped recovering the Marvel Netflix shows because they were boring us. I mean, we didn't even finish the last two we tried. So we're just out on this one, which is an old bit of shame to some people because our hate-filled reviews of Iron Fist Season 1 were, were fairly popular at the time, but I don't think we can do it to ourselves again. I, I, I don't think I've got it in me. Yeah. I'll be honest, I'm a, I'm a little disappointed it's not the week that I'm on holiday in, in October. That would have been real convenient. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, of course, the only the only downside is we might not get... Uh, there's another legend like... Uh, was, it, was it Kevin? Who was in the ice cream? I think it's Kevin. Oh, uh, Kevin. We've said Kevin at some point. Yeah. I don't know if it actually is or if we've just said that so many times now that he is just Kevin. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you joined, if you started watching our content, specifically almost cancelled TV reviews or the news every week, uh, any time in the last year and a half, and you're wondering, what is this Have You Got Any Vanilla at the end of the show? Where, where, does, where does that come from? That comes from Iron Fist Season 1, because there's a line, the, the line, Have You Got Any Vanilla, uh, made us lose our, lose it. We, we were laughing so much talking about that line of dialogue. It was easily the high point of the entire season. It it just needed to be immortalized. Yeah, so that became so that so Iron Fist did contribute to the, this show. It, it, con it had a lasting effect. Very directly, yeah. But with that said, I'm still not putting myself through 13 episodes of season two. Do, do I do I want to see how the Beecham siblings like? Oh God, I forgot about that. You know, continue on. Did, are they not dead? Or the Meechums? No, they weren't dead. Like, cause, cause by the end, oh. the son who was a dickhead became an ally. And he's like, he's like a kind of a good guy now. I think it tells you a lot. In my head, I rewrote it so they're dead. And I don't even remember how the sister story ended, but I think she was getting darker at the end. I think she was becoming more of a villain at the end. And then Kun Lun was at a bad spot. But anyway, so I had to in think, a bad spot. I had to think of what you call the stupid city that he comes from, because uh, he's the he's the, he's the protector of Kun Lun, sworn enemy of the Hand. He's the immortal Iron yeah, Fist. Yeah, but I mean, Hand are all dealt with now, right? We, we we did that over the last other stuff. Defenders. Just you wait until he needs a hand sometime next season. Unbelievable. I'll move on. All right, can, um, can we... Yeah, please. We'll move on. Um, so... Uh, we get some trailers this week. Let's go to the trailers. We'll, we'll start off. There's some pretty big stuff here, actually. And we'll start off with the biggest one. The one that is no doubt... In getting... your opinion. No, in terms of internet buzz and what people are talking about, this is easily the biggest one. Maybe in not your for, circles. Not, not for good reasons, but it's definitely the one that's been talked about the most. 
I, I don't know if I can agree with that. It absolutely is. It ab- I think it's been talked about a lot, but I mean, you know. <laughs> Look, just I'm just going to tell you right now, the Doctor Who trailer is not on this list. That's not what I was referring to, because that's only like 40 seconds. Oh, yeah, that's why, I, that's why I didn't put it on. I thought, no, that's not good enough. Yeah. Oh, so maybe that other thing I was thinking of did have a trailer then, and that's what you're talking about. It did have a trailer. It had a full two and a half minute trailer. Well, don't, don't worry, don't worry. I've not forgotten about that in general, though. That's coming up. So you yeah, don't have to yeah, okay. jump ahead. Right. So yeah, we're going to talk about uh, Titans. we got a trailer for Titans. Um, and despite Connor's weird opinions, definitely the biggest item of, of the, the trailers this week. Because it looks absolutely freaking horrendous. Oh, it looks so shite. It looks garbage. It looks the most garbage that ever garbage out of a garbage compactor. It also sounds shite. <laughs> he he means that literally. He's talking about the sound effects. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't mean you know. You should tell me what it is. I mean, listening to it is painful on my ears. I mean, okay. We already did this in TV multiverse because obviously it was related to that. But I like. It looks really cheap. Right, which would be forgivable if it was good. Right, if the writing was good, it would be forgivable. It looks really cheap. It's really edgy, it's like early mid two thousands. We're going to be dark and cool because we think that's what works. So it feels like an edgy thirteen year old wrote it, um, and made the, the made all the artistic decisions. And then you have you know you have Dick Grayson, you have Robin being F Batman, and here's the thing. It's not actually that strange to the comics to have him want to like get get out from under Batman's shadow and be his own thing that was a part of Teen Titans originally is he wants to be on his own yeah. and do his own thing um, and he was a little bit antsy about it don't get me wrong but he was never F Batman that line is horrible It, I mean it, it would be more applicable to Jason Todd who's the Robin who ends up becoming Red Hood and starts you know does murder people but it would still be an awful line of dialogue that feels very hackneyed yeah but if, if this trailer if you replace Dick Grayson with Jason Todd Mm-hmm. It's immediately more palatable. Oh, I still wouldn't want to watch it. It's more in character. It's more palatable. That yeah. said, you would want to watch it because I mean, I, I, honestly, I'm surprised you're not really into this because it's basically a Red Hood and the Outlaws show. By the looks of it, I will and, stab you. And that's your favorite. <laughs> I will. I will stab you. That's your favorite. You like Red Hood and the Outlaws more than Star Wars, more than Harry Potter, more than Doctor Who. In fact, I just heard Carl say the other day that Jason Todd makes the Doctor like a right chump. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking it. <laughs> so, so yeah, so it looks really bad. Dick feels so out of character, uh, just for the sake of being edgy and different. Um, uh, Dove, Hawk and Dove are in there, and they're like slicing people with their metal wings. Dove especially, who's meant to be the avatar of peace, is just straight up killing people. Dick is firing guns at villains, and I think you looked at the trailer again and said that he was shooting over their heads. It looked like that, but I mean, yeah. it's it's very dark. So it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. I might be defending it a bit. Where it do, it do, I'm not trying to defend it, but you know, just to be fair. Devil's advocate. Yeah, devil's advocate. Yeah. Uh, um, here's my. I mean, he, he does I, definitely stomp on that that dude's jaw, though. And he does stab someone in the neck. That definitely happens. He, he definitely does do that as well. Uh, it's very brutal for Dick Grayson, and even if you argue that he's not killing anyone, like he's not going for kill shots, I still don't like the idea of him firing a gun at all. It's very anti. You know what, it's all the worst problem. Is it reminds me of of Dark Knight Returns Batman, you know, mm-hmm. where he is brutal as shit. And the point of that is, okay, he's kind of gone a bit far. He's kind of he's got so jaded and and so angry over the years that he's gotten you know bitter and, and like that. Dick Grayson should never be like that. Nothing can make Dick Grayson like that. No, Dick Grayson, it just it feels so out of character for Dick Grayson. And he, hearing them talk about it at Comic Con and hearing that, uh, like, oh, this is inspired by the early Teen Titans stories of the 80s with, with Wolfman and Perez. I'm like, no, they were never like this. This this is. I, I mean, I, I'm literally working through that right now. And it's not like this. It just isn't. It, it's. Uh, this was it's a really just, depressing uh, watch. It's just bullshit, isn't it? It looks really cheap. I mean, Beast Boy, like, I'm not convinced they're even going to try and turn them into an animal. I'm not convinced they can with the budget they seem to have. Unless they've just saved all their money for that. That's why the rest of it looks this dirt cheap, is because they put all their money into the Beast Boy effects. Because Beast Boy, if you don't know, is supposed to physically turn into an animal. Like, different animals, you know, with his power. I feel like it's going to be more like Animal Man or Vixen, where he just kind of, like, has the power of the animal, but it'll still just be him. 
just green. And yeah, because he doesn't seem to be green normal, like the, the you know when he's walking around. It seems to be that he's just going to be green when he activates his power. So he's just going to turn which green. Which is which is particularly annoying, as as a big part of Beast Boy's character is, you know, he is such a social person. Or you know, I mean, uh, an early part of his character, he's such a yeah. social person, and and he loves going out and you know being in the limelight. And then he's green, and it's and he feels like an outcast, and he can't fit in. Yeah. Uh... The acting from from Raven is pretty rough as well. Yeah, it's atrocious. Yeah, uh, I have nothing positive to say. I I literally have nothing positive to say about this. The the only hope now is that it's much better than it looks. Like you know, this is just oh, it's a badly put together trailer. It doesn't you know like it's not a good representation. Maybe the F Batman line actually kind of works in context. I don't imagine how I it saw, could. I uh, but... uh, comic book artist Doc Shana said it's like yeah okay we saw uh, he, he said to F Batman we don't know who he chose to kill or marry so you know <laughs> oh yeah the f batman's already a meme it's already a full-on meme it is, it is yeah. um f batman and uh martha like it's joining that immediately and that's it's, it's, I, I, I think it's very apt that it's joining a meme from bvs because i watched this trailer and i feel the same anger that i had watching some of bvs like i'm getting some of those same vibes of we're going to do whatever we want despite the fact that it doesn't really adhere to what the characters are supposed to be yeah, I mean, you you can still see the rage that that we had after BVS, like uh, with that first reaction video we did. We were so angry. Yeah. If we have a similar reaction to this, oh, that review will be fun. I'll, I'll, I'll say oh that boy. much. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm kind of scared. So we won't we won't go on too much because we did already talk about this on TV Multiverse, which is our DC TV podcast and we'll probably talk about it again on the actual comics from the multiverse podcast or dc comics podcast because matt's probably going to want to have an opinion on it so we'll leave that there for now but it looks like absolute garbage and i you know they announced the price as well it's going to be 789 uh monthly or 75 a year if you want to pay yearly um yeah and seeing this i'm like I, oh <laughs> yeah i i um I, I, I know as well if you if you buy the service like now pre-order it for the year you get an extra three months free okay. i know um in terms of the the comic stuff just to, to tell it slightly that you know the, the as a it, to talk about as a service um they're, they're doing some cool stuff with the the reader where you can kind of set it to auto play instead of instead of like manually tapping to go to the next panel it'll like auto play through it and like kind of like what they tried to do with motion comics before that sounds annoying um, to me well, no. The idea is you can kind of you you could because you you can put it on a TV and and watch the and watch it through like that. I've seen a lot of comic stores in particular really happy with it, where they can be like they can just put it up on the on the screens and be like, hey, look, sure. we can kind of get. I feel it. like though my reading speed really changes depending on like you know how many balloons there are on that page, how many like I don't know. I, I yeah, wouldn't trust I, it. I, I don't know if it takes that into account. Maybe it does. I just I wouldn't trust it to change automatically. I like actually having to tap it myself. No, I, I, no, I do as well. It's why I don't like. Uh, I, it's why I don't like audio books because I like to control my speed, uh, what, what I'm reading at. But I think it's a cool feature. See, I feel that's different though, because with audio book, you're still just hearing everything that they're pacing, so you're not necessarily worried about. This is different because I'm still having to read it. I'm just having a time limit <laughs> to read it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I actually like that. Apparently, you can make playlists and stuff though, and it can mix comics with like episodes of TV and movies. So you can have like a here's a Flash playlist with different Flash things from different comics and episodes and shit, and you can do that. Uh, which is all fine. It, but it's it, that's that's all kind of icing. It's not the core. Like the 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 the, the main bit of the cake still needs to be there. And I, it I, is. I don't know if it's there yet, but we'll see. I know I know they put out like a five minute preview for Young Justice. Uh, yeah. Uh, which I've not watched yet. I mean, I, I could, but you know, I, I, we're obviously working through uh, season two at the minute. Yeah, I didn't watch so it because kinda... I, I'm assuming there's going to be spoilers for some of season two stuff, and I've not obviously finished that yet. So, yeah, that will be. I'm staying. I'm staying far away. Uh, but let's move on. Let's move on to the next trailer. We had a few more trailers this week. We had a trailer for Origin, which is a another YouTube original show. It's a sci-fi show with Tom Felton in it, um, where they're promised this, you know planet this fresh start very lost in space almost a little bit darker but you know we're going to cryo sleep we go to this new planet and they seem to wake up 
and everyone else is gone. Just this small group, including Tom Felton, and, and like, everyone else left us, and they're on this just derelict ship on their own, and it's kind of dark and gloomy, and seems a bit of an action thriller show, you know, set in a spaceship. Um, definitely right up our alley in terms of concept. Um, what did you think of it the is, trailer? Yeah. I thought it looked like it had a surprising De- surprisingly decent budget to it. I thought that as well because there's a lot of shots early on where they're, they're fully not left yet and we're still on Earth and there's like you know shots of the city and there's like you know futuristic cars going around and I'm like, you know, it doesn't look, quite look up to say like a, a Netflix show's budget, but it doesn't look bad. Like I'm not, I'm not going, oh, it's like a web series. Like now, admittedly, yeah, I'm like, oh, that's respectable. They may get away with it because it's just the first episode or two and then they'll never see it again, so they can just kind of. Hey, that's that's fine yeah. if that works in context. But um, I thought. As for the rest of it, a little bit weird of a tone that the trailer was giving me. I think it was the the music that you know, the song, whatever it was playing, didn't really mesh with what was going on screen for me. Yeah, I think that's fair. I, I think it looks like the sort of thing that's our show that will definitely probably try. I think, but it it does look like it may be rough around the edges, and I'm not sure if I'm convinced of the actual writing quality yet, just based on the snippets of dialogue yeah. and the various little moments. Same. But but it's it's hard to judge in quick context like that, isn't it? It is. But it does look our sort of thing, so... It does. And you've yeah. got two Harry Potter cast members in there. Who's well, the second? Oh, the, 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 the woman, the lead woman. She she was Tonks in, in, in those movies. You have yeah. no idea who that is, do tonks, you? Yeah, she, tonks, she was, yes, of course. She, she was the one who could like shapeshift a little bit, like change her hair colour and stuff like that. Nah. She was in the last like three or four movies. I've forgotten. Uh, okay, fine. Never mind. I've I've forgotten a lot of those people, movies. People people who give a shit about Harry Potter, which you know, there, there are many. We'll we'll know who I'm on about. There are dozens of us. I, dozens. I knew you were going to do that. Um, which is not true. I know Harry Potter is like a huge thing, but I just love making that Arrested Development joke. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. speaking of, I got just to go back to the Titans trailer briefly. I saw a fantastic image someone made. It's the Justice League poster with all the characters on it, right from the movie. And it's Joe from Arrested Development with a sign in front saying, We demand to be taken seriously. And it's just, you know, after the Titans trailer, everything has to be really serious and gritty coming from DC. And it just really laugh. If you know the original context of that photo, that, that photo that, that comes from, that's really funny to me. But uh, And as, as I've been saying, Oh, I can't wait for the Teen Titans Go movie. There's everything I want from DC right now. So, yeah, so that was Origin. Uh, next up, we had a trailer for History Channel's Project Blue Book. And we've talked about this a few times when it was in development. This is the Robert Zemeckis produced. It's based on the kind of, and I assume it's mostly made up, but it's, it's at least based on the, the rough truth of the actual Project Blue Book, which was like the secret government stuff of actually investigating UFOs between the 50s and 70s and that kind of area. And we actually have um, Aiden, what's his face? Gillen. Gillen. Aiden Gillen. Uh, he's the main character. He's this this professor brought in to look into it. So it looks like a pretty decent, like, sort of conspiracy sci fi thriller where he's like, they're looking for the UFO sightings and um, the trip. Yep. Obviously, Damien Dark's there. He's like this general who's not happy that he's spending yeah. too much time on it. <laughs> he's everywhere, though, isn't he? Apparently, he is. Yeah. So it looks alright, actually. I, I wasn't sure what to expect from this, but it's got that kind of. Um, it feels kind of old school. Like, I almost expect this to be like a movie from the 90s. Yeah, yeah, I can see what you mean. But instead, it's like a ten yeah, it episodes. Looks, it looks solid. Show. I don't know if it's like, oh, I need to see it, but it looks, it looks solid. I think it looks interesting. I, I, I think it, it's again, it's, it's the subject matter is definitely in our wheelhouse, and it's gone for not quite X Files. Yeah, that feels a bit too specific to compare it to that. But you know, it, it's more the the search for truth and the the UFOs and the you know, we'll get glimpses of things rather than just oh, we're it's, going to be talking to aliens after two, you know, two or three episodes. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a bit. I mean, I think X Files d- doesn't do it justice because it's a bit more serious than that, isn't it? It seems to be. It seems to be. I mean, I'm assuming we're going to see some stuff that you know is more fantastical for the sake of it's been a TV show. And we're going to see something cool by the time we get to the end. But um, it does definitely seem to be focused on a conspiracy. And he's actually he's been brought in to prove that they don't exist, but he's just there to find the truth. And as he looks more and more into it, it seems like he's getting more and more evidence that no, there probably is. I mean, well, not those actual UFOs, but because one of the lines in the trailer is. Um, you know the chances of the, in the entire universe that we're the only planet with life on it is basically zero. Like that's just you know, it's like yeah. given how how many galaxies there are, all how many planets there are, there's life out there somewhere. Well, it's intelligent. Well, it can fly spaceships is a whole other question, but there's life out there somewhere. Um, well, whether it even coincides with our life span. 
Yeah, relatively speaking, in terms of the Earth's life scale, life oh, sure. scale we're, we're you know, relatively short. Life in general is, is pretty short on that scale. Yeah. That said, though, I'd still say, just given the size of the universe, it's probably likely there is probably life at the same time. Yeah, yeah probably. I mean, it's still a pretty big place, right? And it is. A lot of it is, yeah. A lot of, lot of stars to, to, to light up planets that can produce some life. So, I, I would say it's yeah. pretty likely. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it looks, looks not bad. Um uh, Aiden Gillen seems to be solid. It looks like a proper like, conspiracy thriller. I think the only uh, potential negative I'm seeing is that I, I can see this being really slow paced. Maybe like too slow paced for its own good, depending on how much they want it, or or equally too fast paced if it feels silly how quickly they're getting to, yeah, you know, the next. I think the pacing thing. is is it going to be critical. It has to be dead on, or or it can just feel like either a chore or just it's just not worth it. It's got no yeah. weight. To it's it. just too ridiculous. They're just getting to things too quickly. It has to find this yeah. sort of steady balance of like, okay, it's taking time where it's believable and it's like captivating, but it's not dragging yeah. its feet getting to the next next exciting UFO element. Um, really is interesting. Uh, check out the trailer. All, all the all the links to the trailers are all in the description for this one. Uh, I made a point of doing next since there's a whole batch of them. Uh, next up, back to spaceship shenanigans. Uh, this is Night Flyers, which is coming from Sci Fi and Netflix. Um, Night Flyers is the one based on the George R. R. Martin book, and the we get so we had we have we've had like quick 10, 30 second teasers of this before, but this was the first full trailer. Proper trailer, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's good two minutes long, and uh, so basically there's like an alien ship or something out there in, in space that's you know close enough that it's, it's t- detected it's like okay we have to yeah. go out there and see what this is and so we have this main character and his team who go on this mission and uh, it seems to be very much a space horror psychological horror where when they get to this ship it starts affecting them in strange ways and it affects the ship maybe even takes control of the ship the final moment of the trailer is the dad because we start the trailer with him with his daughter before he leaves and then the end of the trailer is him on the ship and he sees what looks like his daughter standing there uh, so clearly it's messing with their minds so maybe a bit of Solaris in there um, and, and whatever else so oh, what did you think of this one? yeah it looks pretty good um, it's it's clearly got the style as uh, so, you know it's got the budget again which I, I feel like even now with sci-fi is worth mentioning I think it has obviously been a, a co-production with Netflix does, does help it, it helps yeah um, I, I like the look of it as well I think the most impressive thing for me was the visuals uh, it was really dark and broody and like again I can say very psychological horror in space I think my favourite stuff was some of the silhouettes with the, the this, like this you know just the, the ship designs behind them my favourite shot might have been as a character sitting in what, what looks like just a sea of cables it's very yeah. cyberpunk it's very like you know dark cyber horror where they're just in this really mood lighting but they're they're sitting on like a just a bed of cables and it's just all these cables like snaking around them um, mm. and, it feels, and, and they're also jacked in as well it's worth mentioning one of the cables is jacked into their arms so it looks very you know, I don't know yeah cyberpunk <laughs> cyber horror yeah. like, I, I don't know how else to call it but it's it's given me visuals that I've seen maybe like in a painting or a video game but I've never seen live action necessarily and I'm like oh okay that was cool I've not seen that in a, in a movie or a TV show before yeah I know what you mean uh, so that, that's got me interested Pete you know, I'm getting like some system shock vibes or some you know yeah, I'm down. Still not even an inkling of a date for this one. No, it just says coming soon. Um, I would guess early next year at this point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sci-fi could surprise us. It'd be it could, yeah. Could be late this year, but I feel like, I mean, I feel your like Comic-Con if... trailer is probably when you'd give a date if it was yeah. this year, right? I feel like October would have been good, but if they were going to do it in October, this would be the time to announce it probably. So, I'm wondering if it'll yeah. be a little bit later. Yeah, it could be November still though, because you know mm-hmm. so they they don't really care when they launch things. So yeah, I mean, I, I think we'll definitely try this for sure. This, I mean, I, I think the Origin Project Blue Book and Night Flyers are all something we'll try, but I think this is the one out of the three that's the most like okay, this looks like it could be, could be seriously yeah. interesting. So, um, we'll definitely check it out. So yeah, really dark period. The visuals are really cool. Um, very kind of uh, almost love crafty and psychological horror in space which yeah. you know ticks a lot in my boxes so I'm I'm down for it uh, so next up we got a, a sort of teaser video for Stranger Things season 3 now this wasn't so much a trailer as it, as it was when well, no, it technically was an ad it was an ad for a shopping mall in the Stranger Things universe this was something they put on Twitter so the link for this one's to a Twitter post not a, a YouTube link um, and it's basically there's a mall coming to uh, the town 
there we go, the Olive. Uh, oh God, I can't remember the other town. Hawkins. There's a town there coming to Hawkins. I, I was sitting there waiting. Yeah. There as well. I'll give you another five seconds. There's a town coming to Haw- uh, mall coming to Hawkins, and first of all, I just love that idea that season three is going to be focused around a mall because it's so eighties. It's so like I can't. I mean, obviously there's malls before the eighties, but it's still part of mall culture. Like I think of eighties movies like. Well, whether it's like actually like a movie set in a mall or just like the early scenes of like a, a horror movie or something, but there's always scenes at a mall. It's a very eighties thing to do. So seeing this like retro ad, like you know, crappy VHS quality. Obviously, Steve's got a cameo. Steve's working at the uh, the the pretzel place or whatever it is. Um, yeah. But we see all along these... with the the new girl who's been added to the cast. Yeah, that's why I don't know her name because she's new. But yeah. Yeah, I can't remember. But I know she. I, I remember yeah. the, the news of her being added. Maybe a love interest for Steve because obviously Steve and Nancy uh, are. Kaput, a little bit, yeah. So, so maybe Steve will get get a yeah, and get a new girl. And you know what? We we grew to love Steve in season two, so he deserves some love interest. He deserves it. He did yeah. So and, and more than just his hair product. And more than just his hair product. Um. All that said, if we can have more more of him and Dustin uh teaming up, that'd be that'd be lovely. That'd be that'd be dandy. Yeah. That would be dandy. Uh, sorry, my TV was going to turn off, and I need to spin the batteries to make it the control work. It's weird. <laughs> You need new batteries. No, 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 no. This has seriously been a thing for like years. I just get a new remote. No, I'm not getting a new remote. It works fine. You just need to spin the battery. Uh, so, <laughs> sorry. I'm just saying, when you say it works fine, you just need to do this, this, or whatever. That's the definition of it doesn't work fine. When you have to do something to make it work, it's just one thing. It's fine. It's easy. You just spin the battery a little bit, and that's it. It works. It's fine. The notes are cheap. It's fine. Still, I got other things to get. All things, more important things to purchase. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so shopping mall is good setting. I'm really excited about that. Um, so it's just a fun bit of like, oh here, so we're getting a mall focus for season three. Um, here's some retro eighties sort of like, you know, come to the food court, uh, state of the art. Here's uh, the Gap and Burger King and their nineteen eighties looking logos. Uh, yeah. Exciting. Uh, but of course the notable thing here is at the end that it says coming next summer which would suggest that season 3 of Stranger Things will probably be in the summer of 2019 which was disappointing when I first heard that but then when I stopped and thought about it I went wait a minute it's already summer this year and we've not even heard about when season 3 is coming so it kind of makes sense that it's probably not going to be till next summer Uh, yeah maybe I I still think it doesn't necessarily mean that Um, it could well mean that don't be wrong but that's a that is a significantly longer gap than between previous seasons. It's a bit longer, but it's not. It's not insane, like you know, because because I, I can see them doing the same again. We'll we'll get it summer, and then the, the season four would be like the following, like October, like in twenty twenty. Yeah, maybe. But like I said, this 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 feels like a long. I mean, it is a a longer gap by quite some margin. So I I, I mean I don't know if they're just saying oh it's going to be set in the summer. It is more you know. You know, more than more than telling us that's when it's coming. More that's the setting. You know, it's it's set in the summer. You know, enjoy that. Um, Maybe it know. feels it feels weird to imply that though, and then not say anything about it. I mean, Netflix don't really say anything about it, so we have assholes like yeah, us that, sitting that's here the thing. You it. saying, oh yeah, we've not heard anything about it yet, and if it's coming this year, I mean, I don't know. Netflix. Would you? Kind of Netflix. Yeah, but would you actually be surprised though if it wasn't on next summer? No, not not super surprised, but. I, I feel like it could be, you know, February, you know, quite easily. I, I, I agree that this year is probably a long shot. Yeah, I, I think, think it's... early next year is quite possible. Yeah, I don't think it's coming next year. If anything, I could see it being after March, just so they can put the ad, uh, put an ad in the Super Bowl again. Yeah, maybe. But much maybe. sooner this time, because obviously the last time it was, like, not coming until October. <laughs> it was like, here's a Super Bowl ad, it's coming in six, seven months. Come back there. Yeah, yeah. It depends whether or not they they think that that paid off, right? Uh, sure. Um, I don't know. But uh, so yeah. So I, I I would say the money is on summer next year now, though. I'd say that's the more likely option now after this. Fair enough. Um, I'm I'm fifty fifty personally. I must say it definitely is. I'm just saying it's the more likely option. Of course, there's a, there's an implication there. I think with that that would suggest next summer. Yeah. Sure. Um. 
So, and then finally, just before we started recording, the trailer for Star Trek Discovery Season 2 went out. And while we didn't necessarily always go to, you know, trailers for next seasons, even though we kind of just did it for Stranger Things, but again, that was kind of a weird, interesting side thing. It wasn't necessarily, here's clips of the show and stuff. Yeah. Um, I think this is an interesting one because we changed showrunners and because Season 1, like, we knew it was going to be different. And on top of that, um... I think because we were kind of disappointed where season one ended up with, I think it is more we're more inclined to watch a trailer to see if it looks like it's going to be better, right? Whereas yeah. Better Call Saul, which I think had a season a trailer for season four this week, we don't want to watch that because we're like, no, 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 we don't want a single a shred of a spoiler. We're like, no, we're in. No, no, it's like I know I'm watching that no matter what. I don't yeah. need convincing. We're we're in uh, to that. So, yeah. um, so yeah, we watched Star Trek Discovery season two trailer and. Definitely a lighter tone. A lot more jokes. It, it looks fun. A lot more jokes. Um, I do, and they did confirm at the Comic Con panel that was just happening earlier that we're definitely seeing Spock next season on the show. That makes sense. He's, he's name dropped in this trailer. He is name dropped. Clearly, they're going to build up to him. Um, which I will say does actually almost help with the complaint I was going to have had I not read that he was definitely going to be there next season. Uh, the way they were kind of talking about him, but he was wasn't seen as if oh we're going to keep we're going to keep bringing him up. We're just never going to actually see him. Like he's, he's no, I think it's more just we don't want to show him in a trailer. We don't want to ruin it yet. I don't know. The the the, the, the gist I got from the the trailer was that he's missing because he's he's took a leave of absence from the the Enterprise because uh, they mentioned that in the trailer. It's like oh these yeah. these, these mysterious signals that we're going out to uh, to to you know to uh, investigate. They're related to Spock. He's part of the mystery. So it, it, to me, it sounds like we're not going to see him until later on when we get further through that that story. I don't think it'll be first thing in the season, but I just meant I, I don't think it'll be like oh, last episode sort of thing. I think oh, it'll not be last episode. A bit. Uh, halfway through, maybe two thirds, something like that. Yeah, 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 something in that range. Um, so we see Pike, and it seems like Pike actually comes and takes command of the Discovery, and he leads them into the, the new sort of you know. The, the, the it seems mission. like pretty good casting. It does. It seems like it feels like Pike. Uh, did it actually? An actress just announced earlier today that she's been cast as uh, number one, who, who was his second in command from the the pilot from the cage. Yeah, yeah. She, she the, the actress. I forget her name now. She was in uh, the Librarians. Yeah, which, um, yeah. Uh, I like a bit. Clearly, something. I, I someone I don't know because I I, I don't remember who she was. But um, but yeah. So so we got her. So we got some new cast members. Uh, most notably for me though, I think, and I like this moment. Is there? There's a there's a scene where they're doing some big action stuff, where they're going to like an asteroid field or something like that. And you got Pike, you got Michael, and they're doing stuff. And she's like, "Hey, Pike, Pike, don't worry. Like the the, the Enterprise, the, 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 the Enterprise, sorry, the Discovery, the Discovery's got us, right, girls?" And it cuts back to you know the redhead with the, the tech and the the black women who are always sitting in the bridge and like, yeah, um, yeah sure, sure. <laughs> like, and look, like, and I'm like, that is easily the most character those two have had in the entire show up until this point. It is. It is, and immediately I'm like, okay, okay. Because I, mean, I would like to get to know these characters. I would like for them to have personalities. I want this from the show. So yeah. if that moment's hinting to me that we're going to get to know these two characters and I might know their names next season, <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah. Because yeah. right, was... right now, yeah. the redhead with tech and the black woman, that is what I know them as right now because they're not giving me anything else. Pretty much, yeah. I didn't think it was very meta with Pike saying, oh, let's have some fun. Sure. I think that was yeah. that was one of the lines, and it was like, okay, I, I, you know, you you put that in the trailer for a reason. Now the potential complaint here is that it maybe becomes too much action movie Trek, and therefore is less Star Trekky. But I'll take good fun Trek that's done well over we're trying to be Trek, but kind of fumble it miserably like we did at the end of last season. I'll take I'll take fun yeah. Trek over that, but you know, yeah. If this can be like you know like like the tone of like Beyond or something. I would take more Beyond, yeah. I would happily take a, a Star Trek Beyond style show. Um, and yeah, make it fun. Um, there's a lot of jokes there. There's a joke at the end where there's like an alien in the elevator and the transporter. And yeah, they're, you know, he sneezes on the other guy. And it's just, you know, it's just a thing. It's like, okay. I mean, while well, this ends up being good overall, because I mean, this is the sort of thing where, okay, it plays well as a trailer. But once you actually watch the season, it could be horribly paced. It could, you know, the plots could be stupid. It could be all these things. Because let's keep in mind, Kurtzman, who is now running all the Star Trek shows, like his track record with movies isn't that hot, right? How many, how many artsy? It's, it's not. No. Who have co co written a lot of movies, have co written some right stinkers, including Into Darkness, just to keep it Star yeah, Trek related yeah. there. So I'm not entirely convinced yet, 
but trailer. I'm, I'm way more positive than I was a week ago. Awesome. Uh, it says at the end coming early 2019. That sounds a bit right because uh, season one started before Christmas, but it did have to split the season in half. So I feel like we might start when the second half of season one started, give or take. Yeah, Maybe slightly that, later. That was January, right? That was January, yeah. It was like January 17 yeah. or something like that. Yeah, something oh, that's there. cool. I'm down for something in that period. I'm, th- I'm thinking January, February for for this. So yeah, I am too. Uh, so that that's okay. Um, so yeah, oddly optimistic for season two of Star Trek Discovery. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it. And we don't have any of uh, the love interested anymore because he was he he had the charisma of a wet potato. So oh yeah, I for- I, I forgot about him already. I can't remember his name. I want to say it began with a B, but I don't think it did. I don't think it did. I can't remember. Let's move on. Let's move on to other news. Well, here's the news that I know Connor's been waiting for. There's a, an animated show coming back. Yeah, yeah there is. Yeah. So I know what... you're going to pull out some other one now. <laughs> I know I don't, I don't <laughs> what you're going to do. I don't know what show it is, but I can see it on your face. <laughs> Just let me have it. Let me build to it and, and do it, you bastard. So the show well, that which one is it? the show the, the cartoon that Connor has been waiting for coming back. The big news this week was, of course, that Nickelodeon and Paramount are doing Rugrats. Rugrats is back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I actually did see about this, but I forgot. <laughs> They've given it a twenty-six episode order for a season. Uh, the original creators are coming back to executive produce. All the characters are back, and apparently they're also doing a, a movie, a live-action movie with CGI kids like the, the, the characters of cg as it sounds weird to me but yeah, whatever um that'll, that'll be weird that'll, that'll be an interesting yeah, one yeah um but yeah so so they're, they're doing new rugrats that was worth mentioning i watched That's that as cool. a kid i like rugrats well enough i liked it as well i mean i think my favorite part of rugrats was the ps1 game search for reptar i think i quite like the the the, the movie they did i don't know if i saw the movie when i was a kid I mean, admittedly, this is not something that's going to appeal to us as adults. It's far too kid no. aimed, but yeah, yeah, uh, that's fine. That's cool. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, there you go. That's uh, Rugrats. All right. So here's the one Connor cares about. So Star Wars: The Clone Wars is a uh, is coming back for a seventh season for some reason, and whatever. Let's move on. For some reason, because it's like one of the best animated shows ever. Sure. You're gonna fight me? No. Okay. Oh. No, I, I, I'm genuinely like I'm I mean... pumped about this because I wasn't expecting this. This was, you know, we knew they were having a 10th anniversary panel, which you know isn't that uncommon, right? And mm-hmm. then they just dropped a trailer, and it, it felt like at first it was just a oh you know here's a celebration thing. It's going through all these like big moments with the clones, and then it kind of goes, uh, you know, oh, and it comes up with a, the ha- you know hashtag Clone Wars saved or, or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, we got some old new footage and stuff at the end. I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty excited. We're getting a 12 episode season. Yeah, it's coming on, 2019 uh, on the uh, Disney service, whatever it is. I, I I did laugh. It's it's funny because they've taken the exact same approach that that DC have in terms of making me give them money for their service is revive one of my favorite animated shows. Hmm. Yeah. Um. I mean, obviously, I don't care about it. <laughs> So, you, uh, well, yeah, that's fair. I'm, I'm excited because there's a bunch of unfinished arcs. You know, like they'd done like the rough animation stuff, and it, it was all all the, the voice acting stuff was done. Um, which because obviously this they, they they were ready to go with that deep in production for the next season when when the Disney uh, buyout happened, and it got you know it all kind of got just a bit blurred and then left behind. They did release a bunch of those unfinished things, like they showed them at, at conventions and you know Star Wars celebrations and stuff, and they put them online. I think two of the because they, they, they were four episode arcs. I think two of the arcs are probably going to be those, and then the final one's going to be the big Siege of Mandalore that they've been talking about, but they've never showed us anything. Like they keep talking at, at, whenever they have these panels, they kind of hint at little things about it, but they never show it. I've never shown us any details, so it's probably going to be that. But it's cool. All right, yeah. you can move on now. Original... I'm, re- I'm, re- I'm sorry, just just as far as Comic Con goes, like this this is the thing that got me. I was like, okay, that's the most exciting thing for me all weekend, no matter what. Oh god, no! They they released the the new front cover for Resident Evil Two Remake. That was easily the highlight of Comic Con. Thank you very much. Um, so 
Yeah, so Dave Filoni, the original, uh, you know, mastermind, he's he's oh, back to yeah. do it. Yeah, so he's uh, yeah, so. he's directing it, I think. So, yeah, yeah, your Star Wars fans get your Clone Wars back. Um, this is this, this is such a non-event to me. It is just like, oh, okay, sure, and then I just meant about my business. I didn't, I didn't even read anything about it. I just I knew he'd complain if it wasn't there, so I just copy it. And... It's big news. It has to be there. Don't give me any of that shite. Oh dear. Anyway, so let's move on. Let's move on. So we, had, we did have big news. This actually came before Comic Con. This next one, uh, and this is actually that Batwoman, which because you know they announced that the the crossover this year, the DC CW crossover, uh, which they actually said this week would not have Legends in it. It would just be the three shows. It'd be Supergirl, Flash, and Arrow this year. Uh, so you know, hey ho. But they announced earlier this year that it would in- introduce Batwoman. And we talked about that a couple of months ago. We said, oh, I wouldn't be surprised if in a year's time we were talking about a Bat- Batwoman TV show uh, starting up. I wasn't expecting to talk about it this early, but here we are, because it's officially in development. Um, Caroline Dries, or Dries uh, is going to serve as writer and producer. Uh, who's She worked on Vampire Diaries and all stuff at the CW, so she's a, a veteran there. In the family. Yes. Uh, but yeah, they're developing this for a 2019 uh, pickup. Should it should it happen? Uh, in the series, Kate Kane, armed with passion for social justice and a flair for speaking her mind, soars into the streets of Gotham as Batwoman, an out lesbian and highly trained street fighter, primed to snuff out the failing city's criminal resurgence. But don't call her a hero yet. In a city desperate for a savior, Kate must overcome her own demons before embracing the call to be Gotham's symbol of hope. So it sounds like Batman's pissed off somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. You know, says that he's gone, he's dead or something, whatever. Yeah, who, who knows? Maybe he's in retirement. Ah, uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, but no, uh, it's obviously not a lot to talk about there in terms of the, the premise. Yeah, so it's, it's Kate Kane. I mean, I guess it confirms she's in Gotham because um, I could have seen them putting her somewhere else to just get away well, from. We knew we knew we were going to Gotham anyway for the crossover. Well, in the crossover, yeah, but for her own show, just to like not have to run into the characters. Yeah, I, mean, I could have maybe. seen them say like, oh, she moves to Opal City or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But that. I mean, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. We got Gotham. Yeah, they did put a little sizzle reel. I don't know if you saw. Yeah, you know, they, you know, the for all the DC shows were mm-hmm. little bits, and you know they were teasing the crossover in that basically. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's cool. So uh, about- there was some rumored casting this week, or for related to this, because there was rumored that there were, we'll get some characters showing up on Supergirl this season. Oh. And uh, it's it's funny because uh, the two. That, that have been rumoured again grain of salt is Stephanie and Tim which is funny because if, if you watch uh, the, the, the multiverse show you'll have known those were the ones who were maybe hypothesising were reasonable levels yeah we, we get we guess they were left because like other Batgirls are in movies like scheduled and other Robins are in TV shows and movies that are scheduled so they were, they, they were those were the ones that were left here's the thing though if they do have Tim and Steph, I will say this. I hope Steph's her own character and not just Tim's girlfriend. That will piss me off. Um, <laughs> yeah. I I do not like her being shackled to Tim. So, yeah. I'll say that No, much. I agree. But, hey. Uh, so, no, nah, um, obviously, this could be good. The CWDC shows go very up and down in terms of quality. Um, they yeah. can be very bad. They can be pretty good. Um but you know, uh, I'm excited to see what they do with Batwoman and see see what they, what they do with with uh, just just so, something like this where it's like a, a depowered vigilante again, but with a bit more style. Um, you know, I assume our father will be a character on the show because he's a big part of our story. Uh, our sister, I imagine, will will be like a a villain, in in this, the first season. Yeah. You, you would imagine so. You imagine they'd go to that well yeah. first before they start just doing. Oh, here's a here's a C list Batman villain that we can pull in. You know. Yeah. No, I agree. I'm, I'm sorry if you, if I seem distracted. I'm just I'm seeing some breaking news. About what? From Comic Con. From Comic Con. This is this is related that. But about what specific? This specifically. It, about TV for the next. But I, I feel like this is too big, and you will you will hate me if I don't cut in with this. Okay, well, I guess we're done with Batwoman then. All right, let's move on to this breaking news story. So, we're getting a new Buffy show with weed and executive producing. Fuck off. No, we're not. I swear to God. No, we're not. I, I, Hold I, on. I, I, I am co- not shitting you. I need to corroborate this. I need to corroborate this. Hold on, where's my phone? <laughs> what? What? Uh, it, yeah. Um, Why did yeah, you even let me uh, question you? Just 
cut in with that. You don't. You, you stop whatever we're doing and you talk about the new Buffy show with Whedon. <laughs> we had yeah, a new Whedon uh, show last week. That's just two weeks in a row with Whedon shows. And this one is the Whedon show. This is fucking Christmas. <laughs> This is uh, this is a uh, yeah Fox Twenty One Studios is I'm, producing. I'm dropping f bombs here. What's going on? <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, they'll be reportedly shopping it around to cable and streaming platforms later this summer. Ooh, ooh. Uh, the series will be contemporary while also building on the mythology of the original series. Um, it says although Whedon has had some script input, Breen will reportedly be the major creative voice on the series. Who? Breen. Other credits include. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm gonna have to go back up the article and find whoever that is. Sorry, uh, Monica Breen. Monica Breen. She's an Agents of Shield producer. Oh, that's uh, a good other sign. Credits include Lost Fringe, Revolution, and oh, recent Midnight Tech. Lost Fringe and Shield. Give her a crown. Yeah. She's clearly talented. <laughs> um, it says <laughs> the the slay the Slayer will be black this time. Uh, is is the details that they're going with here? Okay, cool. Yeah, but that's all I'm saying you, so far. Have you, have you corroborated it yet? Uh, I've seen an article. What, what am I on here? I'm on Variety, right. Uh, original cre- series creator Josh Breen is on board to executive produce with writer Monica uh, Owuzu Breen uh, attached to the write the script. The reboot series will see a black actress take over the title role, which was... Wait, so is she still Buffy? I'm not sure. It, this, that, my article here doesn't actually say, it just says um, a yet uncast black actress taking on the role of the Slayer. Okay, I, I think the wording here is just weird. It says taking over the title role, which was played by Sarah Michelle Gellar in the original, but... That doesn't necessarily mean it's Buffy. It could mean this is like so Muffy. Just referring to the Slayer, yeah. Yeah, Muffy the Vampire Slayer. She's playing Muffy, therefore. It, it yeah. could well be, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, what's what's happening? Uh, yeah, okay. Bidding war, networks and streaming services. Fuck me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I had breaking news. I had to just. I, I was like, this, this is. I was just checking that I'm reading it right, and then I was like, yeah, I need to get your reaction live to this. There was no way because I thought, do, do I wait till the end and then like go, hey, we got some news. You collect yourself, and, and, and but no. Okay, so I loved that we put that in between the two DC stories. That that was a great, I great wait, placement. I couldn't wait. Till last I know. Week. I know. I know. Right. So. So here's my th- here's my, here's always been my thoughts on a Buffy reboot, right? Uh, I never liked the idea of remaking Buffy and casting someone else's Buffy, someone else's Giles, someone else's Willow, as Xander, so on and so forth, right? Oh. If you're going to do a Buffy show, I always liked the idea. Okay, set it in universe and just have it be like a new Slayer, like you know, either either in the future, present day years, because obviously now it's been like fifteen years since Buffy ended, you know. You know, yeah, that is the future now. Uh, do it that way. Do it a slayer in the past, whatever. Um, and obviously, ideally, I want Ween to at least like sign off on it and say. And the funny thing is, is because of Agents of Shield, I'm more confident than I would be otherwise. I think because he started that show, then left, and he left it to other people, and that show but was it really felt solid. Like a weed. It still feels like a Whedon show. It does. It doesn't feel as Whedon-y as say Buffy or Firefly does, but it still feels like a Whedon show. It does at its core. So I guess what I'm saying is, is I'm not, I'm not, I'm not upset about this news. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly optimistic, and not, I mean, I don't know the, 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 this new showrunner by, you know, immediately by her name, but Friends, Those are strong credits. Shield and Lost are shows that I like, and Shield specifically, of course, feels weird in the uh, Fringe is very strong and got better as it went. Lost, I think, was was great for other reasons. Although people will fight me on it, that's fine. You can fight me on it if you want, but. We get a Buffy show. Oh, let's just wrap up. Nothing else matters this week. <laughs> we get a Buffy show. Uh, do you, do you oh, still wait a minute. That, that, wait, a minute. Um... Wait, hold on, wait a minute. Here's here's some important add on to this. From me. You found more info. No, 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 no. This is just from me because I'm clairvoyant and I know what's going to happen now. And this is exciting. Okay. This means HD remasters of Buffy and Angel. That's what this means, baby. Oh yeah, strap in, strap yeah, in. We're going for a wild ride, baby. Yes. How does it feel knowing we'll be covering a Buffy show? <laughs> we'll be reviewing a Buffy show week to week. <laughs> I mean, it might not be week to week if Netflix. Oh sure, gets it, sure. But... Yeah, yeah. For streaming service, it might be. Oh, maybe a binge. Oh. Um. 
We're going to be doing a Whedon show and a Buffy show separately. We're going to be doing both of those things. <laughs> yeah. And it's going to happen. You're right. We, we, we always say that these things might fall through. This is getting picked up. Someone's paying for this. This isn't just going away. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is happening. If, if, the, if the studios are, make, are saying we're going to make it, we're going to shop it around, someone's buying it. That's, you know, they'll, they'll be fighting for it. And I, I, honestly, and I, I think an add on here is I think Buffy was a pioneer at its time. I, I, I often joke that Buffy kind of almost made it cool for like a girl to be a nerd as well and how true that is i'm not sure but definitely before then it was you know your star trek nerds and shit and being being a nerd's kind of okay now like for everyone like ner- nerdom is just you know yeah. superhero movies are the biggest things ever and whatever right i think it's interesting now that a new slayer show with a female lead is in a post me too world I-, I think it's interesting that difference in the world that we're in versus when the original was and you know what do we do with that if anything do we just like just strive on i don't think we do i I think we do address topics probably i feel like part of the reason for doing a new slayer show yeah i I think it's even on a creative level that this is being you know spearheaded by a woman by the sounds of it you know it seems like whedon's you know his executive producing but it sounds like he's more hands-off right yeah it sounds like he's there to sort of make sure his baby's not been butchered but he's letting this monica uh Yes. Take you know, take it and do her, do her thing with it, um, and I think it makes sense. I think it makes sense. Like I have no problem with um, you know writers or directors like writing and directing characters that are not like them. But there is something to be said for having like a female led show being ran by a woman. There's something to be said about having a, a gay lead character yeah. being written and directed by a gay person. Like, there's something to be said for that. And I think yeah, that, that's you know we, we had Wien do his take on it for a long time, and obviously I don't want it to like like take apart what he did and like you know make it unrecognizable i think you have to have some of that sense of humor there i think you have to have some of that the, the, your family of characters like i think what would disappoint me with this more than anything is if we find out she's like a lone wolf and never has any friends i'd be like no that's not that's not the spirit of buffy it's right? not that's not what buffy should and that's be. the thing when we, we don't want it to be the exact same characters no but it still has to be a, a team it has to be a little family yeah it has otherwise to be a, a scooby gang really buffy yeah, exactly. Even Angel is still a Scooby gang. That that is the Buffy Angel thing. It's the core premise of those shows, really. It's about building a family even when your typical family isn't there for you. That that's what Yeah. Even Shield's about that. It's about having a family. That's makes oh, it is, yeah, which is why I say that at its core it's a Whedon show. Yeah. Um <laughs> Nothing else matters after this. What's the point? Like Yeah, yeah. We get a new Buffy show. <laughs> Okay, I I thought the headline for this this news video was going to be you know uh, Titans trailer, Batwoman, uh, maybe some of the other things we've got coming up. You know, no, that, that was Buffy. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so glad we got your unfiltered reaction just just there. <laughs> yeah, I might even cut that little bit out and just put it up as its own little. Peter's reaction to the new Buffy show. I, I, I think yeah. it was. I think it's of interest. I, I may just cut that out and put it up tonight, just when it's fresh, and I'll put up the full episode Here, tomorrow. Have it. And I, I don't even mean this whole conversation. I mean literally just the the the, the thirty seconds of me finding out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That'll you, probably need a minute or two to calm down before we continue. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I actually do commentaries for Buffy on Patreon. I've been working. I'm like halfway through season two you right now. Chill. This is the perfect time to promote this corner shop. Um, you know, if you're already on the five dollar tier, you can bump it up to the eight dollar tier, and you get me every couple of weeks. I'll do an episode of Buffy and talk about it. My thoughts. I just did Ted, infamous episode with the the robot stepdad. <laughs> oh, jeez. I was not prepared for this tonight. You know what's funny is your reaction there. That was me when I was watching that Clone Wars trailer. Great, hold on. You cannot tell me that 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 Clone Wars news is still the biggest news of the week. Is it? Is it nothing? It is not. It is factually incorrect. Buffy is more important than Star Wars, and I will hear uh, nothing. Okay. I will hear nothing of the sort from anyone to say otherwise. I, I will say, to me, Clone Wars matters more. But objectively, I'll let you have Buffy as the headline. 
I like kind of arguing that other bit where I said Star Wars is just not as important as Buffy as a whole. Like Buffy's Buffy's. I don't, uh, we just know that was bullshit. So it's not even worth getting. No, it's into. not bullshit. It's just it's right. People may not believe it, but it's right. Um, although arguably, arguably for our audience, <laughs> given that I prob I, I mean, my enthusiasm for Buffy probably attracts a lot of Buffy fans. That our audience may actually lean more towards Buffy than Star Wars. That's not entirely out of the question here. There's only one way to find out. We need to poll. We need to poll. <laughs> we need, we need cold hard data. Tell, tell us the first Star Wars with Buffy, and just know that yeah. if you pick Star Wars, you're dead to me. It's a perfect reason to pick it. <laughs> we got a Buffy show. There's a new Buffy show coming. What? Uh, I've had two reading movies in the past like eight years, and then all of a sudden I'm getting two TV shows. Two what, shows. One of which is a Buffy like spin-off continuation thing, and then the other one's a whole other thing with sci-fi cool. Victorian badass ladies. Which you know, it, it occurred to me like three years ago he was doing a comic that sounds very similar to that with the, the Victorian people with powers. That's probably. And then that be. just. Morphed. It never happened. Yeah, it probably, it probably actually became yeah. a TV show. Yeah, he probably said he's got a lot more material for this than he originally thought, and he's like, "Oh, I can do a show about this." Yeah, yeah, quite possibly. <sighs> oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! This is. Oh, I'm uh, folks. I'm just. Oh dear. Yeah, you, you're right. <clears throat> I'm not all right. I, I think my blood pressure's uh <laughs> in a bad place right now. <sighs> yeah, I was hoping for a nice, that was a quick show. Let's get through this. I want to, you know, get get you get get a nice early night so I can get to work in the morning. And then they drop Buffy. It's like, well, we're, I guess we're, that's we're not fifty happening. plus minutes into the show, Connor. And do you know how many? Uh, what what page of news we're on? Probably like two of nine. You're really close. Two of eight. Oh god damn it! Really close. <laughs> All right, so that was that was. And I, I've just seen, uh, there's a, there's another little bit of breaking oh. news though. Well, it's not to do with Buffy, so I'll get we'll get to it later. Okay, I'll just leave it there. Okay, fine, it's not important. Yeah. So next next up, I guess uh, DC Universe has as uh, ordered. We're getting a Buffy show, car. We're getting a freaking Buffy show. <laughs> I like how Buffy. now you're starting to calm down. You're trying to stop the f <laughs> Yeah, I keep I drop like three and I'm trying to stop now. I'm 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 pivoting to freaking when I start. Like, we we have gone months without dropping them. <laughs> we we do such a good job of keeping ourselves because we are not you know clean people. We are, we are very foul mouthed as a rule. <laughs> I mean, well, and, and we, we, we I don't mean, think I, about that foul mouthed. Oh, I am. I have to. I have to try quite hard and consciously to to keep it respectable. <laughs> I don't. And then you just go and throw it all out the window when I, when I tell you about Buffy. I, I I think I think when it comes to film mouth, this I'm like at a three or a four normally. Out of ten, maybe you're more close to like a seven or something. Like that, but you're not the worst. Uh, I'm pretty bad. No, I've definitely met people who can't go like two sentences without an f bomb. Oh, that's what I'm like at work. <laughs> All right, fine. You're a filthy commoner who spills too much. There you go. Yeah, you happy? Yeah. You happy now? Uh, all right. Star Girl is a. Th I mean, I like Star Girl. It's not. It's not Buffy, but Star Girl is a thing. Uh, Jeff Johns announced at Comic Con that we're getting a Star Girl TV show in the DC Universe, the streaming service. Um, this is the fourth live action show announced, which basically means they're ignoring the Metropolis one. That's basically just kind of. I don't know if it's completely dead, but it's just off the slate until they rework it and bring it back it's, it's not the worst case scenario if it's nah. dead in the water though is it we, we weren't liking the sound of it too much especially given who was involved uh, so Stargirl is very notable because she's a character we both like she's a part of the JSA typically and she, it was John's creation in 1999 uh, named after her, her, his, his sister who died young and they're doing a, a Stargirl show which I mean I think the, the downer on this announcement is because after the Titans trailer we were like oh, I mean like it's hard to be excited for another show from that service right now when we just saw the, the trailer for it, Titans. It kills my enthusiasm, especially for something that's supposed to be so bright, because Titans is supposed to be pretty. But, yeah, I mean, Titans should be, but at the very least, though, he did actually say about this specifically. No, this is going to be Superman the movie tone, Wonder Woman tone, this is going to be about hope and... Yeah, but in another interview, he also referred to Titans as campy, so... I mean, you can be 
campy in a dark way. <laughs> yeah, but that isn't. <laughs> Still, though, those Cam- are the... campy inherently has an air of not taking itself too seriously. Like, I'll be honest. I think over the last twenty four hours. I'm still, I'm doing it. I still hate the Titans show. I'm still mad at it. But I feel like my enthusiasm for this has went up a little bit. It's not as affected by the Titans trailer as it was before. I think, I think after okay. a day, just the fact that they're getting a star, like a Star Girl TV show. Like it's one thing to get a Flash TV show, but now we're getting Batwoman and Star Girl as 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 their own yeah, TV shows. It's no Buffy TV show, though, is it? No, it's not no Buffy TV shows. No, it's not. But but still. <laughs> no. Uh... No, I mean, it's, I, I, it's cool. I would love to be excited about this. I should be so excited about this. A week ago, I'd have been thrilled about this. So I here's just can't after that time straight. I'm just, I'm just dead in, uh, on it. So Berlant is also producing as per usual. Uh, Jeff John is going to actually show on this one, so he's a busy man. Uh, set to premiere in 2019. So this is still, so even though it's the fourth one, it's still coming next year apparently. So they're definitely seemingly like I imagine for a year might be expected. You know, if Titans is this year. This could be the third one next year, and then a fourth one at the end of the year, maybe. If they're, you know. Yeah, could be. But uh, well, so I mean, we we we've we've hypothesized a few times as they'll probably want something every week an episode, right? Yeah, so I, I think they'll run be straight in. So you, so if you have four thirteen episode seasons, that's a year. Yeah. Until they start doubling up, because they might get to a point where they have enough shows where they want to double up, but at least to start and with. add the value, yeah. yeah. Uh, so said the premiere in 2019, Stargirl tells the story of high school sophomore Courtney Whitmore, uh, who inspires an elite group of young heroes to stop the villains of the past and reimagines the classic superhero team, the Justice Society of America. Uh, so, so basically what we're, we're hearing here is that she's going to kind of reform her own JSA with other young heroes, and presumably that'll be how we end up meeting some of the older heroes, as they might come in and offer gains. And they did say this might lead to a JSA show of the older heroes at Comic-Con. Which, you know, is your favourite team. It may be my favourite team in comics. Yeah. yeah. So. No, it's it's my dream. I, I remember, because I have such weird opinions right now, because I, I remember Legends Season 1 and the end of that, and they were like, go, going, hey, we're going to do JSA. And I was horrified, because that season was kind of shy. And it ended up being, like, fun. It wasn't really the JSA that I'd want, like, as an actual JSA-focused story, but their entrance was pretty cool, and the, the little main theme was fun. It, you know, it wasn't cringeworthy. It was like, okay, this was fine for yeah, what Yeah, no, was. they were fine. But if, if, if Legends told me now they were doing JSA, I'd be ecstatic, right? Yeah. So, I'm going to... I'm Speaking going to... of, just, just on that, the, 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 the writer's room for Legends got a, an Instagram... And they're just—it's pictures of Bebo everywhere, like a big, like a, a big man in a Bebo I, suit. I knew you were going to say Bebo. I knew that's where this was going was Bebo. Yeah, what can I say? Hill Bebo, the one true god. Um, so I'm going to—I'm going to choose to be positive about this because I love Star Girl, I love the JSC, and I like the set. I like that she's in high school. I actually think that's a really cool set, and, and it's—it's different from the other shows. It—it it should at least. It, it should be lighter than the other ones because of that setting, because it's the the peppy, you know, teenager. I mean, wants... I mean, for a start, school's in the day and it has lights. <laughs> That's true. This is true. So I am hopeful for this. I'm still kind of hopeful for Swamp Thing because that should be dark. Maybe not in the same way that Titans is dark, but it should be dark. It should be. Yeah, a... Swamp Thing might have been able to. If if that if Swamp Thing had the same tone as that trailer, I might be able to get away with it. Maybe. I don't know why Swamp Better Thing. Better dialogue. But. Yeah, I, I don't know why Swamp Thing would be saying fuck Batman, but I mean, <laughs> whatever. I, I love how you, you know, when we were actually talking about the Titans show, it was F Batman every time. I've, I've already but dropped now, the F bombs. You know, yeah, 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 you're over the limit now, might as well. The episode's already got the F bombs, it's fine. We're already in the R rating, it's fine. Um, uh, well, we'll do some nudity at the end just to sort of round it out, since that's what mature content does. It's what every cable show does, right? <laughs> I'll get a cat. I was I was joking actually. Uh, I was streaming last night, and I joked. You're making pussy jokes. I was make, I made a pussy joke. I was like, oh, I'll I'll put a donation ticker. So every time it hits this goal, I'll show, I'll show some pussy. And I just lifted up Firefly. It's like, here's a cat. Here's a pussy. Uh, it was it was a bad uh, cam girl joke. But you, you know what? It, it, it was fine. It was whatever. It was, it was fine. I, I don't see me getting fired from Guardians of the Galaxy three in ten years for that joke. It's fine. Um, and- we'll see in a decade yeah it? more than that in the the, the movie news uh, for that that tease uh, so, so no, I'm going to be positive I love JSA I love Stargirl the tone that he's telling me that it's going to have is the tone that I want it to have so hopefully yeah. it does not need to be R-rated I don't need F-bombs and a Stargirl or JSA show 
All right, I just don't need them. So yeah, no. just don't do it. Just don't do it. Um, so I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. So I'd love to be hopeful, but I'm not. Because I mean, here here's the thing. What what if like Titan sucks, but then everything else? I mean, Doom Patrol feels kind of iffy because it's connected to titans but what if after those all the other new stuff ends up being good and it's like, okay it had a rocky start but all the stuff they've produced since then it's like well i'll tell you what once we get to uh, disregard again i uh, disregard doom patrol for the purpose of this but once we get to swamp thing and that's good yeah then i'll get excited again that's fair until then but even then it may be the you know different showrunners and like even if swamp thing sucks no. it doesn't necessarily mean that star girl won't be good it, do- it doesn't but you know they're, they're, there's a track record i just i want to be optimistic i really do and I'm more optimistic here than I was on the TV multiverse. I was just like, oh, yeah, Titans, are, yeah. Titans made me hate everything they're doing. But now I'm like, I've Titan, calmed down. Titans made you bitter. It did. I've calmed down. Buffy's cheered me up a little bit as well. Let's not lie. And then yeah. we're, we're here. Every, so. Everything's good news tonight. Everything's good news. E- even even like two Mark Miller shows is kind of good news. Why not? Like, let's do that next. Only, only two. Um, there was more stuff, but it was like movies. So it was like mix of movies. Oh, and... some of the movies. Yeah. Okay, I, I didn't look into it that hard. Yeah, but the article I got from Vital only had two shows, and then the other articles were saying, "Oh, it's TV shows and movies." So I'm assuming the other two or three or whatever it was 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 the movie. So yeah, I think there was like three or four others. We'll, we'll talk about that in the movie uh, show fine. movie news. Uh, you'll get on Monday. That goes up on Mondays now. Yes. Uh, so, ne- so next up, yeah. So Miller World was acquired by Netflix. I said that weird. Miller World was acquired by Netflix uh, last year, I think. Um, and for some yeah, reason, a year ago. yeah, for some reason they didn't announce any content. They, they put like a Miller World comic at one point, but they have We we assumed okay, so there's going to be tons of Netflix shows and movies based on Mark Miller comics. Makes sense, right? So, and obviously we're not surprised by this. We're just surprised it took this long to announce it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm surprised they because uh, including the movies, they had like five things this week. Yeah, it feels weird to dump it all out at once like that when they could have been feeding these for months. I don't know. Sometimes you just want the want the binge binge news, binge shows, binge news. That's the that's the model. Binge headline. Yeah. So first one is called American Jesus, and it is based on the Miller World comic of the same name. It series follows a twelve year old boy who suddenly discovers that he is he. I don't even I didn't know what the premise of this was before I read it. I want to point that out. I, this caught me off guard. A twelve year old boy who suddenly discovers that he is returned as Jesus Christ. He can turn water into wine, make the crippled walk, and perhaps even raise the dead. Uh, it'll be multilingual, it'll feature both English and Spanish. Um, Evadro Gout and Leopoldo Gout will serve as the co-showrunners and executive producers. Uh, and, uh, da, 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 and the first dude, whose name I'm not even going to try and pronounce again, is directing. So yeah. uh, so that's the first show. Here's, here's the thing. Say what you want about Miller, and, and you can say many things about Miller. I can, yeah. But he, he comes up with some great concepts. I think that's his problem, is that he comes up with concepts... And then it's clear that they're there to pitch movies and TV shows, and it's not necessarily about the actual comic. And that's why I don't typically read a lot of his comics. On top of that, he he do, he's one of these guys who likes to be edgy. I thought like I love the first Kickass movie, Kickass, and Kickass one. I I feel like you know Brian, uh, not Brian K. Vaughan, Matthew Vaughan, uh, who directs that and Kingsman. He does a really good job of taking the Miller concept, but filtering out some of the Millerisms and the Miller stupid like you know edgy ideas and turning it into like a, a movie with heart and he did that yeah and he's let one or two things through there was a scene like uh, the second kingsman was it the second yeah it was the second kingsman uh where it was just okay that was a miller idea that was a miller scene right you're thinking yeah, too much okay. one finger I, I, the I, finger I yeah I think yeah yeah um and I was like, okay, that was the, that one. That that one got got through. That broke through somehow. But typically, he's very good at filtering that out to make better movies than what the source material necessarily it is. is. Yeah. Um, Kickass Two, on the other hand, I thought was straight up garbage and had some of the the worst like humor I'd seen. There was like a, there was a rape joke in that that made me almost get up and leave the theater. I was just like appalled at the the the, the witty one liners during an attempted rape scene. It was just it was just weird. And that that's a very Mark Miller thing. I feel. Is yeah, that kind of shit? it's funny because I was I read uh, his his newest comic came out like, like a month ago the first issue uh, Ma- Magic Circle Magic Order hmm? I can't remember uh, yeah it, it sounded up my alley it was this magic thing uh, Koi Pell on art who I love so I thought yeah I'll give it a go because he he attracts some of the best artists in the industry to work with him because he just yeah. does uh, you know very limited projects of like hey come and do this one thing and that's it and about six pages in maybe. Um, he has a you know through magic they're, they're controlling this kid and they make the kid stab his parents in the throat 
it's it's like yeah, like a six or eight year old shock thing. value. We're just here for shock value. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. And the, and it's really annoying because the concept and everything else in the issue, like what's going on, is actually really good stuff. It's just there's there's these moments of of Miller just shoving things in, and it's like you just need someone to fill those out, and and you've got great content. Yeah. So here's hope. I I don't know if the this this pair are going to do that, but here's hoping. Here's hoping to do. And maybe yeah. we can get something. So yeah, if, if I'm siding with a a fellow Scotsman who's a comic writer, I'll, I'll go with Grant Morrison. He's a bit crazy, admittedly, but still a bit more <laughs> a bit credibility. Crazy. Yeah, than Mark Miller, who's you know, bit, bit of a shell, I guess. Is it how I'd phrase it? He's a bit of a shell. Yeah, he's he's kind of like a shit Robert Curtin. <laughs> In the sense that Robert Curtin, he he writes for the TV deal. Right? With, without the edginess, though, he's not got the edginess that. No, he does that. But this is the thing, Robert Curtin's like. He writes for the TV deal. You know he does, because half of his things have yeah. TV deals before hey, the movie. But I, I read about 100 issues of Walking Dead. It was pretty solid and enjoyable to read. It is, yeah. Which is, which is you know, why I think he, he writes with the, the TV in mind, but not at the expense of, of the, the story. Whereas yeah. Miller's just like, and I want the deal. I binge read that over a couple of months. I might go back and binge read like the next 100, you know, when I feel like it. Because you know, they're, they're close to 200 now, I think. They're getting up there. I think so, yeah. yeah. Um... But nah, so, but hey, so yeah, that's American Jesus. So it's this kid who's the reincarnation of Christ, uh, and we'll we'll see how, how we do that. Uh, then the next one that they also greenlit is um, uh, Jupiter's Legacy. Uh, I've heard of this one. I didn't really know much about it, but I, did, I had heard about it. Uh, the project is described as a multi generational American superhero epic that follows the world's first generation of superheroes who received their powers in the nineteen thirties. In present day, they are revered elder guard, uh, but. The superpowered children struggle to live up to the legendary feats of their parents. I mean, that sounds fine. Admittedly, like I, I, I read that and I think I'd rather have Black Hammer or, you know, whatever. No, no, that's true. I, I've, I've actually read this one. Oh god, it was uh, it's framed quietly on R, and you know, gorgeous. Yeah. Um, but it's again, it's really great concept. It's, it's all about you know the, the, the teenage being you know the, the young ones. They're, they're all vapid and you know social media and. Their, mm. their superheroing antics it's not because they you know feel like they should be doing it it's because it gets them clicks and stuff like that and it's there's some really good deconstruction of that sort of stuff in there so it's a, it's a team of booster goals is what you're saying to me <laughs> kind of yeah alright but you've got like the elder like, all their parents looking down at them being like come on you can do better than this yeah in my day we, yeah, we we're heroes yeah, yeah we, pr- pretty much we, yeah. We, we didn't do all this nonsense we showed up we got the job done and then we went away it's fine yeah. it's definitely one of his better comics that I've read it sounds like honestly I feel I feel like I think honestly it's weird that the other one's a TV show I feel like there's more of a movie in that than a TV show but I mean obviously I don't know what the plot's going to be once they get going but uh, whereas yeah. this one Jupiter's Legacy I feel like I can see the TV show out of it uh, interestingly Stephen S. DeKnight who was a showrunner of season one of Daredevil and mm-hmm. correct me if I'm wrong did he not direct uh, the second Pacific Rim as well that was him right I think he did yeah, yeah that was him uh, he's going to be the showrunner on this and he's going to direct the first episode yeah no and I, I like him yeah, no, so, I like it all. And funnily enough, he also worked on episodes of the hit television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. He did, and I thought, are you even? I knew this, and I was like, are you even going to bother this week? You just, you don't need to this Do week. Do you know what? See, see if you were a true co-host of this show, Connor. If you were a true co-host, when you read me that news, you would have phrased that they're doing a, a reboot of the hit television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I'm you, sorry, I just, I, I, I didn't want to lead in with that. Sure, but you... Because as soon as I, because I knew as soon as I started saying the hit television yeah, show, I know. you know, I, I didn't want that. I wanted you to get the, just the words and let it hit you. But you dropped the ball. I feel like you could have done something. You could have uh, done something I, I, there. I consciously chose not to. You could have done something with that. Uh, a lot of Netflix stuff this week. Uh, Miller World was just the start of it. So next up, coming from Netflix, we have... Um, an eight episode order for a show called Black Summer and it is a zombie drama uh, starring Heart of Dixie alumni uh, Jamie King and it comes from uh, Z Nation uh, I'll, I'll say the title how it's supposed to be said even though I, you know, I would say Z instead of Z but obviously for, for titles like this uh, Z Nation uh, it comes from uh, the creator of that uh, Carl Schaefer and sci-fi zombie apocalypse drama's co-executive producer uh, John Hyams uh, Black Summer stars King as a mother torn from her daughter who embarks upon a harrowing journey stopping at nothing to find her thrust alongside the small group of American refugees she must brave the hostile new world and make brutal decisions during the most deadly summer of a zombie apocalypse Okay, sounds alright. So, I've been so, bored of zombie shows, admittedly. Yeah, but... it, it sounds a bit generic. I think 
to its benefit, eight episodes, tight, you know, one story. Yeah. Could could benefit it, and I I, I mean I enjoy zombie stuff. So I mean, as much as it's a bit tiring, and I don't really get excited for it just in concept, but if I see a trailer and it looks good, it looks well done, I'll be like, okay, I'm in. But yeah, you know, yeah, you have no, to... I'm the same. Like, I, 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 it just you tell me it's a zombie show, I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. But it, it's hard to muster excitement based on it's a zombie show anymore. Yeah. Who's your favorite Buffy character? Why? Just, just Where are we going Buffy. with this? Who's your favorite Buffy character? I feel like this is a trick question somehow. It's not a trick question. I just, I feel like, okay, we've talked about that news and now we get one back and we get to talk about Buffy again. So what's your favorite Buffy character? Um, Tara. That's an interesting pick. I did not expect yeah, Tara. That's interesting. No, I know, I know it's an unusual choice, but I thought she really added a lot when she came into the show. Okay. All right, cool. We'll move on. Uh, next up, uh, Netflix has given a 10 episode straight to series order for a show called Hit and Run, an espionage thriller drama from Lior Raz and Avi Isaacaroff. Oh, that's some fun names there. Uh, creators of the praise Netflix series uh, Fodda and um, also uh, two people, Don Presswich and Nicole Yorkin, who were the co creators of Amazon comedy uh, Z, the beginning of everything. So, a couple of, couple of different shows coming together there. Hit and Run settles on a happily married man whose life is turned upside down. I'm, str I'm struggling not to go into the uh, the Prince of Bel Air lyrics here. Right? Yeah, I can see. I'm struggling. <laughs> a happily married yeah. man whose life got flipped, turned upside down. <laughs> I'll just wait a minute, I'll tell you how I became the Prince of Bel Air. Like, I'll stop, I'll stop. Uh, so, his wife is killed in a hit and run. That's basically all it says. There's not a lot to go on, but. You know, Netflix sent I mean, Okay, content. I'm, I'm not going to get excited for that, but okay. All right, okay. My favorite Buffy character, I've, I've often struggled with this, um, but I think these days I might lean t towards Giles. I might lean towards Giles. I feel like as I'm getting older... He, he appeals to the, 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 the man of rules in you. I, I, I guess, because I, I, I'm watching it again for the commentaries, and I'm, I'm there's all these great father figure moments with Giles and how how he like he pretends to like just sort of hate Buffy's generation, but he cares so much. There's just there's a lot of good rich stuff in there, and I, I love that. I mean, I love them all to be honest. Though there's very few Buffy characters I don't like. I mean, obviously there's Riley, but I mean... no, no one likes Riley. Yeah. Uh, all right, moving on. Netflix has announced a new French original series, still on Netflix. Um, and it's going to be starring Omar Sy, who's a pretty big star, actually. He was in The Untouchables. I don't know if you remember that movie. I don't know if you ever saw it. I never saw it. I, I, I remember it happening. Yeah, it had a lot of accolades. This was the movie where he was the yeah. the sort of the, the, the helper for the disabled uh, rich guy, and they kind of formed this friendship. Um, it was a pretty solid movie. Um, I, 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 I saw it a few years ago. Um, but he's going to star as Arsene Lupin. I don't know if you've heard that name before. Doesn't sound familiar. I could be mispronouncing it, admittedly. I've never heard of it, but it's actually a big uh, figure in French pop culture. Um, uh, there's books that are written about, about this character. It's, it's a gentleman burglar who whose adventures at the turn of the century Paris are a staple of European pop culture. The Netflix series, produced by Gamont Television, will be contemporary adaptation of the popular novels that were written by Maurice LeBlanc, uh, who created the Lupin character in 1905. According to the statement, since uh, LeBlanc's books have spawned many TV shows and blah, 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 this will be um, a contemporary uh version of it in modern day Paris and it'll be the first to star a black actor as the titular uh, gentleman thief so it sounds like a likeable thief this sort of charming I'm, I'm almost getting like a almost a French hand solo going around stealing things kind of yeah yeah character and, and in terms of just the situation of you know the the, yeah. the, the circumstance of how this yeah, I'm, I'm kind of getting a Sherlock vibe yeah Sherlock but he's more of an anti-hero Sherlock yeah yeah because he's a thief <laughs> yeah but yeah. Sherlock's kind of a dick yeah, but he's not stealing stuff. <laughs> no, but he's. I mean, he's still. I, I, I'm yeah. get. I'm getting sort of charming, kind of cheeky, like thief. But he, he's not a bad yeah. guy. He'll 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 probably end up saving kids or whatever when he's stealing something because that's who he is. Probably. Yeah. Um. So he'll give the kid back, but he'll steal the fancy watch and the parents' wrist or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> whatever he does, or maybe he's he's too high class for that. No, he only steals diamonds from from vaults. He doesn't do. Petty Obviously. Theft. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh not familiar with the character. It sounds like fun though. I I like the tone they're kinda they're hitting me with. The gentleman thief. Yeah. 
So yeah, yeah, no, uh, I'm down. Maybe something to try, something different. I feel like a lot of like uh, European Netflix originals are really serious. Even the ones we like, like Dark, is a, you know, it's a really good sci-fi show, but it's really super. I mean, it's dark. <laughs> it's, it's actually it, dark. It is. In tone. Clues in the name. Super serious. Uh, whereas this one's quite jovial and fun uh, by comparison. It so. it it, it kind of sounds like a lot of you know very you know French cinema, the the fun side of French cinema. Yeah, the hijinks of French cinema. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm almost getting like not that he's clumsy, but I'm almost getting like a, uh, like the almost the opposite of from the you know Pink Panther Clouseau, mm. getting like the thief version of him almost, or maybe he's almost the embodiment of the 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 Pink Panther himself. This character, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm with you. I can almost see like a, a Clouseau type detective try to catch him throughout the the series. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I actually like the sound of this. The more the more I pitch it to myself, I'm like, oh, this... you're going to be so disappointed. I know. when it's nothing like that. Uh, yeah, it's just this really bland show. He's, he's got a little charming, but it's not actually that fun. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. so speaking of Netflix, this also popped up just before we started. Uh, not as important as the Buffy news, of course. I mean, I mean, how dare I move on to the next story without mentioning Buffy again? Uh, so we have Shonda Rhimes, who again, much like the Miller 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 World deal. This was a while ago, almost a year ago, I think, where she signed this big deal with Netflix to produce a lot of shows. Here's like six shows, six, seven shows she's developing for Netflix. Oh boy, okay. I'll get through these quite quickly because they, they mostly don't sound like the sort of thing we would cover. Or, or I think that's do. a rule for most Shonda Rhimes shows. I yeah, think there's. That's, yeah, it's just her type of shows. I think there's. I think there's only one that I've you know, properly watched yeah. and enjoyed. I think just her audience is not us, and that's cool. That's fine. Uh, but I'll mention what these all are, um, and obviously, I think this is again Netflix like appealing to multiple audiences. They're not all for us, right? Even though they have a lot of good shit that we do find interesting. Yeah, but we we can't yeah. like everything they do, otherwise yeah. they, they wouldn't be able to afford all the shit that we want. I feel like this is them trying to grab a lot of people who watch network TV. Like you know, obviously we are the nerds who come over for the sci-fi shit and whatnot, but. Um, this is like yeah, but they've got us already now. Th- this is grabbing people who would have watched Shonda Rhimes' shows on network. They want them to jump over. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, definitely. so the first one's untitled. It's just the unti- untitled Shonda Rhimes project. It's based on the New York Magazine article how Anna Delvey uh, tricked New York's party people by Jessica Pressler. Uh, uh, Manhattan makes a. I was like a bump no, no, there's no wonder it's still untitled. They couldn't figure out a good way to cut that down yeah. yet. Manhattan makes a, a new friend like no other, uh, but she is a stu- she's the stuff of American dreams are made of, uh, or she is New York's biggest con woman. Uh, is it a con if you enjoy being taken? I'm yes. not actually sure if it's talking about Manhattan as in the as in the place. As if it's a person, you know. How sometimes you do that. You refer to the same yeah, she, or if it's a person called Manhattan. Yeah, I'm actually sure. I think it's this the place. Yeah, I, see, I I thought that when you first said, I was like, okay, we're done. and then it got murky. I'm not sure. Yeah, because Anna Delvey's the character, so I think Manhattan's the place, and then Anna Delvey's the one who is doing the trick. Okay. Yeah, but people come to New York to be tricked. I think that's yeah. Anyway. Oh, okay. Untitled Chandler Range Project. This next one's also untitled. It's called the Untitled uh, Bridgerton Project. Uh, so it's obviously got an idea for titles. Based on the Julia Quinn best selling series of novels, this smart feminist take on Regency England romance unveils the glittering, wealthy, sexual, painful, funny, and sometimes. Enough adjectives, seriously. Uh, and sometimes loneliness, lonely lives of the women and men in London's high society marriage mart, as told through the eyes of the powerful Bridgerton family. That sounds like a dynasty thing, but in England and I'm like yeah I'm, I'm good <laughs> yeah I'm 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 good <laughs> nothing, not, nothing for me I don't even want to try that one like not for me that's fine yeah no thanks uh, the next one's called The Warmth the warmth of Other Suns and um, that's suns as in the, the sun in the sky not uh, uh, as, as a you know a child of a parent yeah uh, so based on the Pulitzer Prize winning author Isabel Wilkerson's award winning book of the same name this powerful groundbreaking series tackles decades long migration of African American f- uh, fleeing the Jim Crow South in search of a better life in the North and West between 1916 and 1970 so this one's a bit more serious I can uh, this feels like a, a little bit higher budget I feel like this will be like a big sort of strong Emmy contender period piece uh, with it the feels subject feels less like what I expect from a Shonda Rhimes show I guess that makes sense, though. She has two or three that feel like her shows, and then she's branching out and doing different things with yeah, the others. Yeah, no, it does. It makes sense. Uh, so that's that yeah. one. Uh, next one is called Pico and Sep- Sepulveda, I think we pronounced that. 
Uh, set in eighteen forties against again, this is a period piece. Set in the eighteen forties against the surreal and central backdrop of the Mexican state of California, uh, the series tracks the end of the idyllic uh, era as the American forces threaten brutally and war at the border to claim this breathtaking land for its own. So this is this is America taking California uh, and into into the U.S. Sounds a little bit more like we might enjoy that one. Yeah, that sounds like I guess a period piece. It's more of a historical war. Um, but there, there could be stuff to explore here. It's, it's, it's actually it's definitely a period in history that I don't know a lot about. Like I, I knew, I knew, yeah. I knew Mexico had California at one point. I don't really know what the circumstances of it. Yeah, I knew there was a war, and and, and then it, it 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 was American then. Yeah, like I, I don't know. Is, is it the U.S. now? I don't think so. Right? Is it? No, God no. Yeah, this is this is before oh. it became the U.S. Right? So this is just. It can't be right. I don't. I, I, I don't remember the. the when the US formed I can't remember I mean, that. Uh, me either <laughs> that's history I, I don't know history I don't know history I thought you might know that you like history I, 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 I like history when it, when, I, when it interests me uh, I'm, I'm really bad with dates though even, even when in the history of stuff I do like <laughs> you'd think you'd know if it was that century though <laughs> you'd think alright you next, next up next um, up this is called uh, is this a bit of the title? Maybe it is. It's called Reset and then Colon. So it's Reset, My Fight for Inclusion and Lasting Change. Uh, so Netflix and Shondaland have acquired the rights to Ellen Powell's uh, groundbreaking memoir detailing her life and career, including the lawsuit she brought against her former employer that sparked the intense media scrutiny, uh, shook Silicon Valley to its uh, boys' club core, and presaged the Time's Up movement. Uh, so this maybe feels a bit more Shonda Rhimes, but again, it's very based in real life you know yeah. uh, story um, again it doesn't necessarily sound like our type of uh, content that we would cover but um, but there you go so that's uh, that's that one next up The Residents Netflix and Shadowland have acquired the rights <laughs> to Kate Anderson Bower's brilliant non-fiction book called The Residents Inside the Private World of the White House which offers a vividly accurate insider's account of White House resident staffers and the upstairs downstairs lives that they share with the first families at one of the most famous homes in history Okay, I, I can see that being fun potentially. Yeah, a bit more Shonda Shonda, Shonda Rhimes again background to because yeah. obviously she's been in the White House before with one of her shows. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um. Honestly, my my entire history of Shonda Rhimes is basically the spoof and dear white people when they're watching the the fake version of one of her shows. Yeah, no, that's good. That's basically... I know. I I watched uh, the first two seasons of of How to Get Away with Murder, and that was really good. Was it okay? Yeah, like, it 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 played with timelines quite a bit. And uh, it wasn't the the legal drama you might expect based on you know just descriptions. Hmm. Um, and the last one here, there's also there's another one as well. It was a documentary series, but we don't talk about those. We just talk about uh, you know our, our, our fiction uh, shows. Uh, Sunshine Scouts. This one's called. This is the, actually the, easily the most interesting one because it's so weird. It's the weirdest one by far. Uh, this is a darkly comedic half hour series in an apocalyptic disaster. <laughs> Uh, it spares a ragtag group of teenage girls at a sleepaway camp who must then summon their moxie and survival skills to weather the fallout and ensure that all that remains of humanity abides by Sunshine Scout law. I'm kind of in for that. Yeah, that sounds so. This is like the, the least Shonda Rhimes one of the whole group, but I'm I'm into this. It's so wacky and weird, and like I can just imagine this group of goody two shoes girl scouts being like, no, no, we're going to like enforce the law of scout <laughs> amongst the survivors. Yeah. Uh, that sounds wacky and fun, so it does. I'll, it does, I'll take it. Yeah. That's Sunshine Scouts. Uh, so that wraps up Netflix section of the show. Okay, cool. We've got Amazon. <laughs> Just the one from Amazon. Don't worry, it's not a whole section for each of these now. Uh, but this one's interesting, actually. This 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 may have been the one that piqued my interest the most out of the news, not including the trailers. Uh, of course, until we got Buffy reboot, you know, continuation yeah. live on air, as you do kind of Buffy show car did, did you hear I, I know I told you remember I, I'm, I'm trying to do like a, a Peter Griffin thing but the bird is the word you know a, did you hear the bird yeah. it's the word yeah. uh, but Buffy's yeah. coming back cool. um, so Amazon is given a series order uh, to Tales from the Loop and this is interesting I, I actually had heard of this because I'd been talking to one of our friends James about uh, this because it's also been turned into a role playing game you know a tabletop you know rolling the dice right, game okay. Um, it's actually based on the artwork um, from from an artist uh, called Simon Stallenhag, who 
does futuristic science fiction paintings with uh, it's blended with rural real life uh, Swedish like landscapes. So if you actually just Google his name, you get like a bunch of his art. If you, if you Google Tales from the Loop, you get a bunch of his art. Um, and it's basically basically if you ever played Fallout, I would say it's kind of like the, the the robot sort of style of Fallout, but it's not post apocalyptic. It's like how like this future tech is sort of integrated into like rural real life right right okay um and the and the role-playing game is also specifically that all the main characters you play with were kids so i think this is amazon going for their stranger things that's what i think they're doing mm. with this um okay and it's coming from nathaniel halpern who's going to who's going to write it and run it and he works on legion so we got a little bit of cred there with the with the, the person yeah. on the show yeah. And we have a, a cool sci-fi, possibly kid protagonist show. This is like really into our, and also it's a cool name. Tales from the Loop is a really cool title. It is, yeah. I like it because it's not just describing what it is. It's 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 you know basically well, what does that mean? Tales from the Loop. What's the loop? You know, I yeah. like it. Yeah, that's true. What do you think? How, given what I've just told you, what are you feeling? Yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued. I, I like. Yeah, with the, with the with the premise, you know, the 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 paintings meets the you know real life. Yeah. Like, okay, but what 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 does that? How does that become a show, right? Well, that's the beauty and of it. Yeah, is okay, you've got style, you've got tone, you, so you kind of just fill it with what you want, right? You, you can basically do whatever plot you want. The the, the, the I, I read through some of the like the 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 like the, the 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 game master's guide for yeah for the, the for the role playing game, and a lot of it was about okay, so maybe there's like a conspiracy, maybe maybe like the kids find like a uh, like a broken robot and like patch them back up but there's like you know maybe there's like an evil company in town doing some weird experiments or something and like i mean maybe that's a bit too strange of things but then again that's assuming that it's a similar like on people maybe this could be like no they're, they're doing experiments on this technology like to another dimension yeah. or something like that or, or i mean again that's very strange of things but it could be like a number of different things um but again it was very open it was like oh maybe there's like a murder in in the town maybe there's a killer robot going around maybe there's you know this secret you know government uh, it always implied as well that there was like if you go into like, the the main part of the world if you're not in the rural area there's like there's like trips to other planets maybe or the moon or at least or something i don't know like but there was a lot of open like ideas to it you could basically bring in what you want it's just the idea that you've got this sort of rural i mean obviously it comes from sweden but like americana or whatever you know whatever it was going to be set yeah and you could have uh, basically a group of kids and maybe they'll be the adults will be villains maybe they'll be robots that are allies maybe they'll find old drone parts but the idea that it's kind of worn down like it's oh this is just kind of old school now like it's not like a new fresh yeah. thing like we're used to having these like you know robots or drones like helping out with things and stuff like that i recommend the art's kind of interesting to look at though i recommend googling uh his name and just uh, so just to remind okay. you that's uh, simon stalin hag uh with a little symbol over the a but you probably won't get it right, but that's fine. It'll probably come up in the predictive. Just type in, just type in Simon S T A, and I'm sure it'll predict for you. Yeah. At some point. Uh, but hey, so that's Tales from the Lips. I'm actually kind of excited. It's obviously it's a bit of an open book in terms of what the plot might be, but in terms of setting and style, I'm I'm into yeah, I'm it. intrigued. So yeah. that's Tales from the Loop. Next up. Is is it still from Amazon? No, no, no. We're moving on. Right, this is okay. this is actually. I've, I've got a little Amazon thing then. Oh, Amazon okay. related thing that's popped up. As an Amazon, Comic Con's happening, and otherwise it's going to be a full week late. Yes. Um, just a quick one. It's a little casting update for uh, Good Omens, you know, the, the Neil Gaiman book. Okay, sure. Uh, that Amazon are adapting for a show. Uh, Francis McDormand is 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 doing the the voice of God. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Yeah. I, I actually ignored a few uh, casting news items this week because there was just so much other stuff. I just kind of yeah, yeah. I thought that one go. was kind of kind of notable. That's interesting because there was some casting for Supergirl. There was some, there was another casting for Why the Last Man. I just left them out. I thought no, we have enough stuff. Yeah, um, I thought, but this is this is a name yeah. that people will recognize. Um, so moving on, this is actually Shudder. This is uh, Shudder, which is the horror streaming service, which is owned by AMC Networks. Um, which you know is, is available in a lot of the world now. Actually, uh, certainly in most of the English speaking places. Um, so they're doing a, a TV show based on a movie, an original series. Uh, you may not know this this movie, but have you ever heard a creep show? Yeah, heard a creep show. Creep show was an anthology horror movie. Uh, Stephen King was involved in that. It was uh, based on uh, written by Stephen King. Even like the actual movie was written by Stephen King. Uh, just based That's on probably why book. I've heard of it. Uh, and George Romero directed the original, and it was it was I mean you know, I had like. I can't remember how many stories, four or five stories in the movie. So the idea is that the TV show 
well, each episode will be an anthology, you know. And what I think is funny about this is we almost had a Tales from the Crypt show a couple of years ago from Shyamalan. Yep. And this almost feels like it's basically just filling that void. Like, we're getting a creep show TV show instead. You know, each episode... Because even the tone is meant to be kind of similar, where it's meant to be kind of fun. Like, you know, it's not just meant to be super scary. It's meant to be, like, fun, kind of darkly funny horror. Okay, cool. Um, the, the movie had, like, a, a Ted Dance, and then it had Leslie Nielsen, had Adrian Barbo in it, um, and it had a couple of sequels, had a spin-off comic. But, yeah, so this is kind of interesting. It just to say the new creep show will fulfill the promise of the original film's tagline the most fun you'll ever have being scared each episode of the anthology series will tell original fun and scary stories each will be held by a different director so that's kind of a cool idea uh, Greg Nicotero who's behind this who is mostly known for he, he does like makeup effects that's who he is he does like a lot of, he yeah. did um, I'm trying to think of a specific movie he did um, and just making sure I'm not mixing him up with Rick Baker or um, anyone else from the you know the you know Savini the, the name that. sounds familiar yeah well he works in Walking Dead now like that because that would be probably why it sounds familiar in this article they say oh Walking Dead's Greg Nicotero but I'm like I know him from other movies I just can't remember the art off my head but he's done yeah. makeup effects for a long time he's actually going to be one of the producers he's going to direct the first episode and then there'll be other directors coming to the other one so this is this could be a really fun idea this could be a really fun like each episode's its own horror little short movie um, yeah uh, so this is really cool this is a really cool especially for like horror stuff um, something that I might have to talk Tim into uh, uh, doing for review rather than you. It sounds very Tim, doesn't it? It does. I'll have to see. As I said, though, if it's a binging thing, it may be the sort of thing where it, when it goes up, we'll do like one a week for like the next couple months, as opposed to just doing yeah, them all once. Yeah, give it like the, the sort of treatment that you and Matt do with Glow. Yeah, because um, I don't think Tim can commit to doing like you know ten episodes over you know a week over or whatever. ten days or t- yeah. two weeks, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that may be like a, a busy man. Thing. But no, that that could be fun. So that's Creep Show coming to Shudder uh, at some point. So uh, I don't know if they mention how many episodes. No, they don't. I would guess six or ten, maybe eight, something in that range. Yeah, anything between six and thirteen. Yeah, yeah. I I I think no more than ten. I feel I feel like Shudder's not big enough to do thirteen episodes. But I mean, I could. Be... I mean, they've licensed in shows from other places because like, they've got a lot of foreign content that they've the licensing. Yeah. But I mean, obviously, that's not them that's deciding how long that is. Ah, oh, that's fair enough. Uh, so that's creep show. Moving on. Okay, so this is something that I was like, I'm sure we talked about this before, and we did because we talked about it when um, the company got the rights. Who was it? It was Paramount uh, Television and Anonymous Content got the rights in April. So we talked about this them getting the rights then. But now it's uh, now Hulu is officially developing uh, the Vampire Chronicles uh, based on the Anne Rice book series. Um, yeah, I remember talking and her, about this. And, and her son's working on the scripts as well. Um, I actually laughed. I'd forgotten about this, but I laughed when I read it at the end here. Uh, Brian Fuller was previously attached to the project, but exited earlier this year. Of course he did. That's really funny. Because that's what he does. That's really funny. Also, they got the rights in April 2017, so it's actually been over a year. So I'm impressed I remember we talked about this, but I remember talking about it. <laughs> I remember it very distinctly. It doesn't yeah. feel that long ago. But yes, the Vampire Chronicles series follows the vampire uh, Lestat de Lioncourt, who serves as a hero, and hero and narrator. And that's all it says. But, I mean, honestly, this show is already super long, so I'm fine just having a short description for that one. Yep. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, I'm sure it's the sort of thing we'll check out. A vampire show, sure. But, uh... Yeah, pretty much. I have no attachment to anything. I've, I've never seen the movie with uh, Tom Cruise. Right. Me either. Interview with a vampire. But, uh... uh Alright, next up. Here's something else that sounds. There's a lot of interesting shows that appeal to us this week as well. This is this is the thing. What bastards giving it all us at once? So, uh, so aftershock comics is partner is partnering with um, Universal Television and uh, Zach Kaplan specifically, uh, who wrote the Lost City Explorers, which is a comic book, it's a sci-fi comic, and they're going to develop this for a TV show. Uh, it's written by Kaplan uh, with art by Alvaro uh, Saraseca. Saraseca? Um and colours by D. Cunliffe. Actually, I like that they put the, the colourist in there. That's nice. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I appreciate I, I assume that's that's coming from Aftershock, presumably. Probably, yeah. Um, but so, credit to him. here's what this is about. So, I'm saying sci fi, Lost City Explorers sounds interesting. I actually think this is a really interesting premise. I like the sound of this. The Lost City Explorers is focused on a group of teens who become underground urban explorers after a mysterious expedition leads to the disappearance of one of their fathers. Following his tracks and on a coming of age journey through the subterranean tunnels, they ultimately find the holy grail of lost cities, Atlantis, buried right under New York City. So basically, they start going into the tunnels and looking for stuff, and they end up going deeper mm. and finding actual hidden civilizations and shit. 
I mean, it's a bit hokey, but it's, like, it's a fun hokey. This is, again, going back to, like, okay, we've got Tales from the Loop, we've got Stranger Things. This is another sort of kid-focused adventure Stumbling into another world. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a classic trope. But it works. I'm all, I'm all for it, yeah. Yeah, I, I enjoy it when they do this. And I feel like there's not been a lot of them before Stranger Things, but now that's kind of put it back into into Vogue. I think I think that there hasn't, with that sort of tone, of, of a more adult tone to it. Yeah, that, that's fair. Because before you had, I mean, go back to like, like Chronicles of Narnia, for example. That's kind of oh, that sure. same principle, uh, just with a more childish tone. Okay, I, I guess what I mean is, is a tone that's a bit more like... Uh, the movies I like from the 80s like you know the Goonies yeah. Explorers where you've got this more I don't want to say edge because I don't like edginess but <laughs> like that, that, that's been tainted hasn't it yeah that's Thanks been tainted times. but like you know it's got that attitude of like you know the, the it's like it's kids who swear it's kids who have a bit of a bad mouth because they, yeah. they are kids they're, they're teenagers um, but they're likeable they're relatable so no I'm with you yeah. and believe it or not that's not the only Aftershock comic thing this week Okay. So Aftershock Comics is teaming with Fox Twenty One uh, TV Studios. Uh, so that's you know they're teaming with a completely different. Pre- you know, pre- previously mentioned for for being behind Buffy, the hit television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer, or the soon to be hit television show spin off of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um. So yeah. So producer Warren uh, Littlefield, who worked on Fargo and Handmaid's Tale, it's an interesting mix of shows. Uh, and they're going to, this is an adaptation so the, the comic book is actually from Adam Glass who recently started writing Teen Titans and we didn't like it very much but that doesn't, just because we don't like him as a comic book writer doesn't necessarily mean that a show based on one of his comics won't be won't be good yeah, well, that's true and for all we know his original comic book stuff's better than his, uh, his superhero stuff where he's could writing be. never heard anything better but it could be that's true, it's called The Normals I don't know if you've heard of it uh, I haven't, no. No, I've not either. Uh, created by, created and written by Glass, The Normals is centred around one man who finds out that his perfect life and family may all be an illusion, setting him on a crusade to save what he believes is real and loves with all his being, while having to save the world in the process as forces seek to destroy him. So it sounds like it starts off a bit Truman Show-esque, but instead of a reality yeah. show, it's an illusion. And it you know it goes from there. It's not a bad premise. I, I see there's things I like in there, for sure. Yeah. I think my concern, just at a glance, is okay. Does that need to be world-ending events that it's not? You know. I agree. I agree. It's one of those things, though, where if that's where it's going to go, maybe they shouldn't put it in the description. Maybe just build their natural because it's the sort of thing we're in the show. Once we get to that point, I may have built there so naturally. It might do, but you yeah. tell me that I expect it relatively early, right? Yeah. So I mean, who knows? But. It doesn't sound bad. It sounds interesting. And I think we've got someone from Fargo and Handmaid's Tale uh, working on it. Yeah, uh, Aftershock getting around. Because I think uh, Animosity that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, that was Aftershock as well, isn't it? Yeah, that was a movie though, not a TV show. Yeah, yeah, but just in general, yeah. they're, like their content is getting around. They're like, oh shit, we need to get in this. I mean, you're making a killing. Yeah, yeah, because all, all, you know, there was nothing before. You know, not, I mean, they're a relatively new company anyway, to be fair, they're only a few years old. but yeah. Which actually reminds Still. me, we're getting a Lazarus TV show at Amazon. I just remembered that. Jeez, shit. Oh shit, yeah, we are, aren't we? There's so much coming from Amazon soon. Like, we just haven't got any of it yet. Yeah, uh, it's kind of like Apple. It's that like Amazon actually do already exist and you know function as a as a streaming service. It's just yeah, we, we we've seen some of their shit. Yeah, and they've been good. You know, Tech and Comrade Detective are solid, but they yeah. were, yeah. Um, all right, oh. next up, Entertainment One has secured the IP rights to Skin and Earth a graphic Ooh. comic series written and illustrated by alt-pop singer-songwriter Lights. So that's the name of the, the, the singer. I've never heard of her, but Lights is, is what she goes by. Uh, to adapt uh, for television uh, out of, of this comic. So E1 will adapt all six issues of the comic. Uh, it tells the story of a girl looking for hope in a hopeless world, caught between the romance and cults, gods and mortals, and just trying to find a good brooch. <laughs> Uh, Inaya Jin is uh, led down a dark path by new lovers that reveal a twisted fantasy world and her own true nature. Set in a post-apocalyptic future ruled by the Tempest Corporation, the adventures, <laughs> the adventurous tale of loneliness, deceit, and self-discovery is soundtracked by Lake's album of the same name. This is, uh, this is such a roller coaster of interest for me. I, like, there's like one sentence where I'm like, oh, that sounds quite good, and then it's like, oh, but that, I like the sound of that though. Oh, but that sounds quite yeah. good, and then that doesn't sound so good. I don't know what to expect from this. This is so... I, I, I have no idea what this is. I'm kind of intrigued, though. Do you know what I'm intrigued by? That it's, 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 it sounds like just one crazy person's, like, 
because because it's her music as well that soundtracks it. It's like one person is just unadulterated, just complete it's, vision. It's it feels like truly auteur, right? Yeah, everything about it's from her. It's her world, her music, her story. Like so, for yeah. better or worse. For better or for worse. Yeah, we're going to get like her crazy vision of whatever this is, because some of it sounds a little bit young expect. adult, like you know, young adult novel esque. You know, the the lovers yeah. and the cults. But then it's like, oh, post-apocalyptic future, real bit of Tempest Corporate. I'm like, okay, a bit cyberpunky, but it's also yeah. kind of fantasy. Like, I don't, I don't know what to expect from it. So. No, not me either. I mean, I, I, I can respect that they're trying something. Yeah. Uh, but that'll take us on to the final news story of the week, unless you have something to add on after this. I got one that, that, that came okay. earlier. But... You got one. Uh, so French pay TV powerhouse Canal Plus and Fox Europe and Africa's uh, arm are joining forces to adapt a series uh, uh, based on The War of the Worlds from H.G. Wells. So, you know, big notable property. Obviously, most of us have seen at least one of the movies based on it, if not read the book. Uh, the show will follow uh, the classic alien invasion story, but set in the action in present day. The eight-part series, so that's eight, eight episodes. Sounds like it's going to be a limited series as well, by the sounds of this. But I could be wrong. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll be Probably should be, given the story, right? Yeah, unless they've got a plan to, like, you know, continue it somehow uh, but the A-part story will shoot this fall with Studio Canal and Urban Mythos Films uh, on production duty um, the adaptation was created and written by Howard Overman uh, who worked on Merlin in many ways H.G. Wells' novel is a cautionary tale of racial superiority and ethnic conflict he said it is these themes that I wanted to explore more fully in a modern day reimagining I look forward to bringing our bold fresh and relatable version inspired by this much loved story to a new audience um, so it'll air like on Canal Plus and Foxy Channels in Central Europe. Where it'll end up in the rest of the world is unknown at this point, but I'm sure it'll end up somewhere as a as an original. Oh, it'll be somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so no, so I mean, obviously, we like sci-fi stuff. I don't know if honestly, I'm intrigued specifically by a, another adaptation of War of the Worlds. Like, yeah. Do, do you have a favorite adaptation? Um, I don't know. I mean, I've seen both the the, the 50s movie and I've seen the Spielberg movie. Yeah. Um I think the Spielberg one's pretty solid. Um I, I think the, the, the tension's done quite well. Uh whereas the fifties mm. movie's a lot more sort of classic sort of B movie sci fi where it's you know Yeah. Um it doesn't really have the tension or anything like that. Um, um but I do like the old schoolness of it versus the you know, the really scary, gritty like aliens in the, yeah. in the new one. Yeah, yeah no, I'm with you. Um but that said it's been a long time since I've seen I've not seen the, the Spielberg one since like 2007 something like that yeah so I might not like it as much now if I watch that again yeah I, I, it might not have aged that well yeah I've only seen it the once it seemed it was a pretty enjoyable at the time but I I don't know if it's aged that well so I'll say I think the original's a safer choice the 50s one but no that's fair I, guess, uh, I agree with that I guess I'm not super enthusiastic about either of them though so maybe maybe I should get a new adaptation that's Maybe you should, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm personally, I'm a big fan of the the radio play that, that they did of it, or, you know, a while ago. I can't remember. But I want to say eighties, but for some reason I feel like it's earlier than that. Yeah, I wonder if it almost works better as that because I think in the newer one, the Spielberg one, like they went with it. Okay, so it's a big blockbuster, so they're like they're turning ships over and there's all this, and then in the fifties one, they're just kind of goofy designs and it's like it's fun but it's not necessarily scary or anything like that yeah i wonder i wonder that one if, way you don't see anything yeah it's just your it imagination works. yeah it maybe works yeah. better but who, who knows maybe they'll, they'll think of a new take on it that'll make it work so yeah and with that we are finally at an end of this show this epic length show. Almost. almost oh yeah that's right you've got one more thing that popped up yeah yeah Hit yeah me. we got more trek more trek yeah kind of it's um we're getting a a Discovery spin-off miniseries of shorts, um, but I think this is this is worth them. They're, they're going to be ten to fifteen minute episodes. They're called it's it's called the show's called Star Trek Short Treks. Okay. Yes, with the colon. It's kind of a horrible name, right? Just call it Short Treks. Just call it Short Treks. Yeah, there's no need for that. Yeah. Um, you know, it says a uh, four episode miniseries will focus on side characters and stories taking place on the periphery of Discovery including a new story about Harry Mudd, directed by oh, and starring Rain Wilson. Oh, that's a... Wait, so are these full-length episodes? No, they're going to be 10 to 15 minute things. Alright, so... See, that's weird to me, because to me that feels more like a web series. Yeah. 
I get that, but obviously they're they're full on linking it in. They're throwing it all at it. They're calling it all like discovery related. Sure. This this came about in the uh, the the discovery panel uh, this, uh, this afternoon at, at, at Comic Con. Um, other two, so uh, there'll be uh, what sounds like a horror story starring Aldous Hodge as a man trapped on an abandoned ship. Uh, the other two will focus on existing. Discovery crew members, uh, one, one Saru and one Tilly. Interesting. That'll be coming this fall. So. Okay, I'm just looking at some more news from Amazon actually here from SDCC. Okay. Now, obviously, we're not going to talk about this trailer, but apparently, a trailer for Homecoming from Julia Roberts um, uh, hit. And. Um, right, okay. Yeah, I don't know if they actually released this online. Though. This might just be something they, show, they showed at the uh, the con. Because um, it describes that, so I just want to acknowledge that that's out. If it is up online, we'll probably talk about that next week and talk about that. Uh, but this is the one that um, is a psychological thriller with Sam Esmail uh, working on it from Mr. Robot. Okay. So that that that's what makes it interesting, you know. So Heidi, Heidi Bergman, played by Roberts, is a caseworker at the Homecoming tr- uh, Transitional Support Center, uh, a guys group facility helping soldiers transition back to civilian life. Uh, Walter Cruz is one of the soldiers eager to begin his next phase of his life overseeing Heidi and the facility is Colin Belfast uh, played by Bobby Carnival so there's someone from Mr. Robot as well popping up mm. uh, an ambitious company man who is uh, who has manic demands point to questionable motives so that's interesting based on that um, and it gives us a date it's going to premiere on November 2nd so we'll be checking that out I'm sure given the talent behind it yeah uh, Jack Ryan we knew was uh, uh, 31st uh, but they did announce that Numi Rapici has been cast in it to play Harriet Uh, a capable, sharply intelligent and toxically charming BND agent, uh, Germany Secret Service just just so you knew what that was (laughs) that's what they call it, I I appreciate that because I wouldn't have got that I didn't know that either, Uh, who crosses paths with Jack Ryan in South America Uh, Lore, that's the one that the popular podcast turned television show uh, showed off a teaser trailer at the con and that's coming October 19th so that's close to Halloween that makes a lot of sense makes sense I don't yeah. know if that's something we'll check out I, I, I can't remember if that's uh, let me just read this here Laura explores the real life frightening disturbing tales that give rise to modern day myths and legends season oh, season 2 okay so we didn't do season 1 so we're not doing season 2 it's fine I think we looked at it and decided that it, it wasn't our content it wasn't super yeah it was kind of like half recreation half like non-fiction right yeah um, of course we good, definitely looked at it and decided of course it. you mentioned Good Omens Francis McDormand um, so that's coming so uh, Expanse was brought up uh, they said season 4 was coming sometime in 2019 so you know that's promising yeah so so yeah they released a, a video message from the cast and crew uh, thanking fans and asking for demanding the show be saved from cancellation along with the thanks concept art of the Rassi spaceship taking off makes appearance at the con uh, holy crap the thumbnail for the video on this uh, variety link uh, uh, I can't remember. Wes Chatham who plays uh, Amos I was just trying to remember the actor's name there uh, right. he's got this big cheery grin in his face and I'm just freaked out seeing Amos smiling it's weird uh, he looks so happy uh, so uh, then they brought up the tick uh, released a behind the scenes video um, and they toured the office did that give us a date or anything for the tech? let me just check didn't appear to we already, already, already this, got this renewed this is the problem with Comic Con yeah the, the, obviously news just keeps coming there's panels while we're recording um. So yeah, it no date for that yet, but that's that's fine. So yeah, but t- tech was already but, renewed, though, so we know we're getting season two. Yeah. So that's cool. Let's be honest. None, none of this matters tonight, does it? Does it? No. Oh, because Buffy. You're right. Buffy happened. <laughs> Buffy. Oh. You Buffy show. So. I. Do you know what? If it wasn't for the fact that this show had went so, on so long that I am starving and need to go make some dinner. I would sit here for another 20 minutes talking to you about Buffy and how good Buffy is and why... Oh, I, I, you do it every, every time, every, anyway. <laughs> Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And it, I'm, I'm assuming it won't, won't be called Buffy, though. I'm assuming it'll be something the Vampire Slayer. I would assume so. Yeah, or something akin to that. Um, so that, that'll be cool. I, mean, I suppose I could just call it the Vampire Slayer and that way, if they ever like, want to reboot it again later, they can just keep that name... <laughs> They could, they could. Who who was it who who did who show? They regretted uh, always using the, the names. Was it Whedon who did who did this? 
can't remember. It might, where and it was, it might have been Wien where, you know, like it was oh Buffy, so Buffy's always safe. Angel, well, Angel's always safe. So by the time it got to, to Firefly, it was like no, I'm not using a character name because that means someone's safe. <laughs> as as I like that. Yeah. Uh, if it wasn't, I'm we- pretty sure it was Whedon. Yeah, if it was Whedon and Gray, if it wasn't, then I applaud whoever said it. That's fantastic. Because uh, Whedon, of so course, it's a, it's a great theory either way. Yeah, Whedon, of course, liked to like sort of pretend that someone was a main cast member, then kill them off quite early. That was like something he did. Yeah. yeah. Um. So that that's that's super fun. I like that. Uh. But yeah. So that is uh that is this week's news. Super big. It got even bigger mid show without me even knowing it. But there it is. If you if you like these ramblings, if you enjoy us putting on this show, do think of going over to patreon.com slash TV where you can support what we do, keep us going, keep us keep us making these videos and podcasts and stuff. Uh one dollar a month's fantastic. One dollar a month you get a bonus monthly episode of extra. Uh it alternates between almost cancelled extra and one twenty one extra, and it's like a movie or a TV topic 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 about uh it's something from either movie or tv uh sh- you know shows or industries or whatever um uh, the, this month was 121 extra it was the first episode of that where we talked about aspect ratios and the shape of cinema and how it's changed over the years so you can get that bonus show for one dollar um and you also get to get some early access to some other stuff and then there's obviously more stuff at the five dollar tier and so on and so forth uh but if you can't do that don't worry too much you can also support us by liking and subscribing and commenting letting us know what you think all that stuff all of it helps uh, but that is us that has been almost cancelled TV news for the week of Comic Con and Comic Con's still on for another couple of days so no doubt there'll still be some more meaty news from it for next I, week's I'd, show I'd expect next week to be pretty hefty as well yeah although the funny thing is, is we record the movie show on Sunday so Comic Con's news will should all be out by the time we're recording that so yeah that's could, could be quite the marathon that could be a hefty move, movie news show this week but we'll, we'll find out uh, but it's not going to have a new Buffy thing so you know that that you know of that I know of I'm mean, sure maybe we'll, maybe we'll get like an angel movie get a new Buffy show and an angel movie and hell Firefly season 2 is coming to I mean that's what's next right <laughs> we're, we're getting more Buffy so Firefly has to be the next on the list I know uh, on, on the topic of Whedon continuations there oh the, the Doctor Horrible's uh, there is getting a, a comic. comic book. Yeah, it's getting a comic book. Yeah, like just yeah. it's it's all happening at once. So you know, Fireflies next. <sighs> I love that they're just gonna do everything. You're gonna get you're gonna get Dollhouse before you get Firefly. Hey, I'll take more Dollhouse. I like Dollhouse. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm not disputing that. Just I'm just saying that that will be the case. I just have no words to wrap this up. This is this has been something else. This has been something else. Um, so to so to end in a different lane than normal. Normally I end with "Have you got any vanilla from from Iron Fist?" But that feels like a disrespect given the news. I, I like the start of this video. You were explaining that. Yeah, but we're going to end differently here. I am going to end with a line from from Rupert Giles from the end of the opening two par of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Where after realizing who the Slayer is and who he's going to be working with to save the world for the next little while, he turns to the camera, not, not, not to the camera, but just, you know, to walk past the camera and simply says, the earth is doomed. <laughs>